Popco Brands would like to thank you for your support. As the owners of 63% of all American brands, every 10 seconds each American produces a dollar of revenue for us on average. No need to buy anything different or try out something new. Just keep doing what you're doing. That is because we are the world's leading producers of podcasts, nuclear materials, and chicken nuggets. Popco is also the sole owner of all carbonation methods, plastics for consumables, and mass water purification techniques. Because of the wide and sweeping reach, if you are eating, sleeping, alive, or dead, Popco would like to thank you for your continuous support. Hello and welcome. Thanks for cracking another road soda. Hot and fresh since 2015. Word. On this episode, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is okay. And I interview the author of Wet Goddess, Recollection of a Dolphin Lover, Malcolm J. Brenner. With me is... Justin Mitchell. <laughs> you do <laughs> Uh, uh, we did Asian this, Pat. Asian Pat. He's the Asian influence on the show, yeah. and uh, that's the way we'd like it. If any, I retroactively vouch for any Asian uh, racism that this podcast has ever made. It's Thank okay. You. It's Thank okay because I say it's and okay. I can't wait till we have to use that in court <laughs> because we really <laughs> lean into it. Yeah. <laughs> now, guys, uh, yeah, take it in as as you can. Patrick's on this episode. It'll probably be the last one for a few months unless we start mm -hmm. doing some kind of Skype recording. So oh. now. On this episode, it's a very special episode for me because, uh, so everyone knows recently we did the uh, the Craigslist posting where we say, do you have an interesting story? Yep. We get, dude, you get a lot of people writing. A lot of people. I can't write wait to hear it. A lot of people think they have an interesting story. Yeah. But dude, like there was this one, I think there was this Can one Can I interrupt person. you real yeah. quick with an interesting story that I have? Okay. <laughs> 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 Please go yeah. ahead. Like someone e uh, emailed that day. I have an interesting story, and I'm like, well, what is it? And they're like, well, my boyfriend just broke up with me, and my <sighs> uh, my dog ran away. I'm like, it's normal. That's not. You don't have a crazy story. It happens to me every day with all the women I date. <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's like a call forward. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, we interview. Or I did. Uh, Patrick was not with me for the interview, but I interviewed Malcolm J. Brenner, and he. Is I don't know if a lot of people know, but I, I spoke about this already a couple times mm -hmm. on the podcast, and I want to say it right out the front so that you do at least wait around for the interview. If you want to hear this interview, it's going to be towards the end of the show, so just fucking skip, skip past. Through believe if you me, you want to yeah. skip past this. But I uh, love this episode. It's nah. a fun episode. We have a lot of fun things. But the fact that we interview Malcolm J. Brenner, if you want me to, so here's this: a lot about 2009, 2010, uh, a book came out called Wet Goddess, the one mm -hmm. I talked about. And a guy wrote up a blog about it and then posted it on Reddit and it became, it fucking exploded. Yeah. Like it was just somebody writing like a book report because it's a, it's just a crazy topic. And then it, it opened up this Pandora's box of these people who've been fornicating with dolphins. And mm -hmm. then like all these people started coming out with stories like uh, how they wade into the water and they kind of like coerce dolphins and they have like, they have a, a, a it's like a, a manual on how to coerce a wild dolphin into having sex. But it all became from this book where this it's a story about a man who meets a dolphin mm -hmm. at a, a theme park and falls in love with the dolphin and and eventually makes love with the dolphin based on malcolm j brenner's experience did by any chance did you give him a lineup of dolphins and asked him to point out his love his love <laughs> <laughs> because i think he'd get it i think you he'd think, pick it uh, i honestly think say, he would i, think I really he would. think he would and i'm not saying not, that not to, i'm serious i'm, I'm just, 100 percent yeah. i did ask i did ask him if, if what animal he would like to have sex with the most i was like if mm -hmm. you could pick any any animal yeah like, what would it oh, be i know my answer what was your answer uh, Pamela Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Growl. Dude, he also kept doing that too where he was like, I hate this division of human animal. Like, we're animals too. We're animals too. And I, I mean, obviously I understand too, but it's it's different than you and I understanding. It's, the, it's like society as a whole understanding that and being like, 
It was just a yeah. It's it's, just, it's a super interesting story. So he, I, yeah, it's just not to spoil it, but he say he was he was he's angry that people consider that humans consider stuff better than is that what it is? Is no, it a superiority? I, I think it's. I don't think it's a okay. no no. I okay. don't think it's a superiority. Okay. I don't think it's like that at all. And yeah. he when you listen to it, I think you'll definitely understand. I will. And here's the other thing with this interview is, uh, I don't really let him do like his own like okay so mm-hmm. how. Uh, I watched an interview beforehand. If you want, look up Dolphin Lover on yeah. YouTube and watch that. That's going to be his story because yeah. he doesn't really tell owns his the space story. So he, uh, in which I could have had him on there and he would have told the story. And it's a great story. It's very good. But I wanted to interview this guy. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to have another story. I didn't want to have the same thing be told again. The man behind the incident. Right. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So he, uh, but yeah, if you watch uh, YouTube Dolphin Lover, it's like one of the first. It's like a fifteen minute long thing you can watch it and he tells the tale about how he uh, was down in Nacoma there used to be a fucking theme park in Nacoma it's that's the Florida that, Land. that's more the craziest that's thing. harder to believe <laughs> than it's now just a housing development dolphin fiddling yeah right but and yeah dolphin fiddling yeah. and then he tells a story about going there why he was there that whole thing but our interview goes a little more in depth and we talk about uh, we don't I don't I don't center the whole thing around like, well, how did you get it in? What are the mechanics? It's like all that shit is such low hanging fruit that yeah. feels already been done, and it's like, even at one point, um, I, I think I even, lo- I even I love told, that there's low hanging fruit to, in, uh, to, to that, dolphin to fucking. Dolphin. <laughs> yeah, and you know what the lowest hanging fruit is? Yeah, is that how mermaids are made. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Man, but I did at some point. That's so low; it's below the radar. I know it's so low; it's below. And yeah. at some point, I said that it's that stupid line. <laughs> And, that's uh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, I do say that stupid line, and he goes, like, "Oh, that's like the number." He's like, "Oh yeah, that's like the number one comment on on YouTube and on that video." And it's so ignorant because they're not mermaids, the they're, dolphin they're, people. They're actually mammals. And, yeah, they're like they're <laughs> they're, he did, they're he, demi dolphins. So. He did know a lot about animals. He was he did I, know I'm a lot sure, about no, mammals. I'm, and I'm stuff, sure yeah. sure he did. I mean, uh, it's but yeah, because, again, I wasn't doing the interview to belittle him or anything. Of course, you would. think you think about it however you want. Yeah, I don't care how you think about it, but I just wanted to. It's interesting. I'm for it, and I think you're going to think it's an interesting thing. I'm interested. Before also, if you guys want to call in and tell us what you think about the interview, in fact, and leave a message, you can do. You can call in at 706-200-1213 and tell us what you think of that interview. I, I'm so interested that I'm going to give you two dollars for this podcast and i would encourage anyone listening to do the same there you go you gotta call in and give me two <laughs> fucking dollars uh mm. but i mean the whole show is great we have a yeah. great news segment we got more craigslist stuff guys it's a nah. fun episode skip to the dolphin thing don't don't <laughs> skip we got a fun episode <laughs> it's just gonna butter you up for the dolphin interview to, at the end guys <laughs> If you at any point you want to call into the show and tell us what you think, you call in. It goes straight to voicemail. You leave a message seven zero six two hundred one two one three, and uh, we play your 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 things on the phone. I once fucked an aardvark, but I don't think you'd be interested in hearing. No. About that. I mean, I kind of would. <laughs> I'm just feeling. I want to know. What I'm feeling insecure the, about this segment. About the <laughs> <laughs> I never. I never had sex with an aardvark. I, I'm not. Not that there's anything wrong with that. There is somebody. Yeah. I mean, the numbers are there. There's somebody. I would start with Aardvark, yeah. and then I would start going through all the animals. And then you start, uh, I, I actually have another problem. It's a different kink. It's kind of like your yeah. zoo, zoo, uh, zoo kink, yeah. but I got to fuck them in alphabetical order. Alphabetical. I got to go. I'm on the Fs. Shit. You've, gone, you've, been, you've been at I'm it. I've been fucking frogs all day. <laughs> Do you know how many frogs there are? I didn't know what I was in for. Species. Subspecies. <laughs> and they find a new one every day. Like, Every Two day. Years. Yeah. I'll tell you I'm raw, baby. Anyway, so, <laughs> guys, uh, you can also email in to this show, uh, roadsodamail at gmail.com, and we read all your mails. Anything you have you want to send in. Can I awesome. ask you one question? Just a little appetizer. Um, is there dolphins he's not attracted to? Or is he attracted to all Dude, dolphins? again, I, I wish... I'm I went okay. in. Yeah. I had a bunch yeah, of questions no that I had, and I was. But if I had some of these questions, I uh, there's so many things I wanted to yeah. ask him post. But guess it's what? Hard. I, I it's can hard. get him. An, I can get him another interview. It, your your big problem is you humanize humans. Yeah, that's my problem. <laughs> like, and so you probably <laughs> would have a hard time coming up with interesting questions because you're you probably so. on, you're too on his side. I think. Am and, I too on his side? Yeah, I'm, and, and I feel I, like I'm trying to be super neutral. I I think you being neutral is about is, is eighty like, percent on someone's side. Like you that's your so? neutral. You're you're very sensitive person so you think i'm yeah. protecting malcolm i think you are and i think you're worried about how he's going to be perceived and i think you're very worried you know you don't you don't yeah. like if I, I if i eviscerated him right now you would be upset i wouldn't and be upset i would take 
the opposite I would have to no reason to eviscerate him. No reason to because I don't find uh, you know. It's why what, are you doing this to me? What I'm, I'm why are you doing this to listen, me? Listen, I just we're the intro, we're is, the intro segment. You're doing this to me, guys. And now, <laughs> another word from our sponsors. I'm a psychic. This episode of Road Soda is brought to you by Reggie Johnson's Weight Loss Hair Growth Serum. Are you a fat guy who wears hats or a fat lady? who wears wigs. Well, stop. With our new patented formula, turn your fat into hair. This serum is guaranteed to change your fat on a molecular level into hair. They said it couldn't be done, but they never met Bob Chansey. Hi, I'm Bob Chansey. I used to be so fat and bald. Now I'm not. Join Bob and hundreds of others who have purchased our product and watch your spare tire turn into hair power. I'm Reggie Johnson, inventor of the magical weight loss hair growth serum. My brother has cornered the dick pill market and I have cornered everything else. All you do is take a squirt of this shit, put it on your fat ass and your bald head, and bam, stop looking dumb being fat and bald. Get yourself a head of hair like a lion. You're gonna be so damn skinny with so much hair, people gonna freak out. You're gonna scare kids. Turn your life around with my weight loss hair growth serum. Reggie Johnson. Scary skinny, scary hairy. It's time for the news. The Let's news. do the news, man. You know what the news is? Um, it's things that happened semi-recently, but not at the moment. You're right, because that would be impossible. Yeah. You can't. No, it couldn't Breaking be news. Yeah. They what do, about just – it's more just broken news. It's already yeah. – But it's not breaking news because it's still written. There's mm -hmm. no there's no anchor just coming up with Live what feed. he's saying. Yeah, right. they, they, they would literally shut down like a robot. Like a robot? A robot, yeah. <laughs> I'm Jewish. Oh, okay. Angry mom's bizarre road rage incident let with Lyft driver passenger goes viral. Can you – yeah, this is actually on Fox News, and uh, this goes viral. I see everything that goes viral, so I don't know how I didn't see this. A woman has been dubbed Kids Bop Karen. Kids Bop. Yeah, do you remember oh, that's, Kids Bop? Oh, that's, um, yes, the infomercials. It's um, they, they ruin a song you like. Right, yeah. exactly. They take, like, um, I'm sailing away. Yeah. And, and then it, they have kids sing it, which is awful. Can you honestly <laughs> conceive of the real person that exists that buys a Kids Bop CD and they're like, I'm skeptical if I'm going to like all the songs. Of course I like the ones on the yeah. on the commercial. Yeah. And then they put it in. They're like, fuck me, but they're all great. <laughs> 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 With they, they're all they good. Exist. They exist. That they person do. exists. The numbers are there. And they're probably a sweet person. They're probably so nice. Yeah. Got some, you know. A YouTube video posted on Sunday shows the woman berating the driver for cutting her off on the road. Mm. All right, let's watch the video. There's like clearly a video here. Do I need to I'm gonna. To I speaker. think I'm gonna try to get up in there so we can also hear this. Uh oh! Now we don't have the sound on, dude. I I'll love do, it. I'll do running commentary like a play-by-play -play of, what's, we, of what's on. We, oh, I'm so I'm gonna be so upset. I think it's because it thinks the audio is coming through the new. There's a person at Lady's head coming so you, in through it, the window. First of all, the way she's got she's very cartoonish. The way she's got her head in the window. Do you see this? Yeah, it's she's. Poking it through a window to look. It's the way a cartoon peers around the corner to see if somebody's in the room. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's the same thing. So already, and her head, her head looks larger than conceivably it could be. So already, yeah, that's why it is already. It's 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 uh, very cartoonish. So I got the sound fixed, and now let's hear what. I'm sorry, 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 really sorry. You are? No, it's my it's my it's my it fault. It is your fault. Yeah, I know it's my fault. That's why I'm I'm saying sorry. Oh, uh, she's. She thinks it's cute that her driver. Almost hit my kids, and she thinks she needs to take a video of it. She's mugging for the camera right now. Like a okay. Stopping in the middle okay. of the road is gonna help. You being a bitch is gonna help. <laughs> wow. I don't know. Calm down. Calm down. Ooh. It's okay. I'm sorry. He apologized. It's, it's my fault. He apologized. Yeah, I know. It's and my... you know what? It, that didn't upset me. But yeah. the bitch ass hoe sorry. that told I'm you best. to calm down. Whoa. What I'd like you to do is How is this making you feel right now, Justin? Yeah, Justin. Justin, of course. Fuck you. Ah, God. They can't hear me because they're listening to Kids Bop. 
kids. <laughs> there uh, it is, and that's how they. And they're like, and punchline. That person. How did I, that I, make you feel? Okay, so I'll say really quickly. I get why that's gone viral. It has nothing to do with any literal thing that's happening right now. Mm-hmm. It is always fascinating to see someone the Unravel. whole action that why she pulled this guy over is yep. that she wanted to pick a fight with him but she was so easily distracted just like a bull with a red cape yeah. by the lady in the back <laughs> she looked like a bull ha- having, <laughs> a, having a camera out that she's now mm-hmm. apologizing for the driver who created the whole thing to begin yeah. with she's now going oh it's fine I'm happy with you I hate that girl because I knew this is how she would have reacted she, dude, and you know what that is the, her, her jack in the box of, uh, box yeah. of anger Anger yeah. has been cranked up all day long. It wasn't nobody. Go, nobody gets like that because that situation happens. Somebody gets that way because they wake up and they got three kids instead of two, and yeah. the third one's a piece of shit, and they're just trying to they're like all pieces of shit. <laughs> there's, you know? met, there's no kid that's not a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like to think mine's not notorious. Yeah, he will be. Wait, wait, listen. Oh, I will go and get this. Here we go. Does your audience know that you have a kid? Yeah, I, everyone knows I got a and kid. And he's got a piece, and he's, that he or she's a piece. I've not met her, but how how is he or she not a piece of shit? He's adorable, and, he, and I love him. What does he do? <laughs> <laughs> you're a piece of shit. So you're a piece of shit. Excuse I've, me, I've sir. Met, Calm down. Yeah, <laughs> I've not met the, the mother, but um, I assume she's probably a piece of shit, considering you. So mm. how would the kid mm. not be? Mm. And I don't mean this in a negative way. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't mean this like we're all pieces of shit. I'm just saying like how is – now the whole world's a piece of shit. Everybody's angry. They're pulling over other people because, oh, you cut me off. Don't you know I'm the most important person in the world? No, you shouldn't yeah. cut off. I know people get cut off 10 billion times a second on this planet every day, but you cut me off. I'm, I'm special. Mm-hmm. These are the piece of shits that live. Yeah. Do you, so Wait. how do you think your kid's separate from that girl who stuck her giant head through the window and, and he's and not fought. but I still love him I'm not saying you <laughs> love him I love pieces of shit Everyone's on the a daily piece of shit. we got <laughs> torn down okay so he's a little adorable he's piece, a piece of shit, of shit though. He, is. They're all, yeah. he doesn't have a chance to not be like no, there's there's such we're all a slim terrible. chance. We all have the capacity he, for, he, for he's hot and molten metal right now. And you've got a hammer and your mom and your, and his mom's got a hammer and you're sort of hammering him into a shape, right? right? But he also has responsibility to resist or let that happen. And based on his choices to either resist or relent to your pressure and the pressure that you guys put in is going to be the shape that he becomes. And right. do you know how many fucking people are skilled metalsmiths making these kids? Zero. The, so, they so call me. They call me the Mjolnir of. If I went to an ESC school and I was like, "We're gonna make swords," <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the swords that they created. We're gonna be the kids. Yeah, like, I'm making a sword. He's not that sharp. You're right. Yeah, you're right. I'm just he's... saying. He's all right. Sorry. They, look, I mean, you're going on a rant about how awful. All I wanted to do. It sounds like what I'm trying to say about this lady. Your kid's gonna about do how the she's. Same thing. She was With revved. A hover bike. All you're right. She's just all revved up all yeah. day long, yeah. and then finally something happens that finally we snap. Kind of like when somebody mentions something about shitty kids, and then uh, finally just someone snaps about no, they're shitty. And I have no investment <laughs> in this at all. Right. <laughs> I'm just, None this, at I'm all. Just off the cup. But the um the the thing with her is like I really hope she's not yelling at her kids like that. I know it's probably you, too much to ask for, but you, yeah, it, I would rather her if I was the girl or the guy in the car if she was yelling at me go like, well, I would rather you get this all out. Now, and then be nice to your oh, kids. Man. You know, yeah, dude. You know what? You that know. would that's way too more thought, too much thought than anybody. In fact, I really like how the guy. It's really sad how mm. nice because most people would, as soon as they're in their they're in the lift car yeah. and somebody's like that. I know me personally, I would probably be like, I would just roll my window up on her head, you know, <laughs> yeah. or something like that. But the guy's like, I'm sorry, miss. I know it's my fault, but it's because, dude, he needs that job, and that's really sad that he has to be so complicit to such a psycho. Mm. In like, ah, it's you know what. Let's go to the next news it's, story. Uh, you know, just really quick. Real quick. To, to diffuse the situation, Let's diffuse the situation like that, I'm just saying, if you are the Lyft driver and you don't want to be a mensch like he was saying, mm-hmm. you're right, ma'am. I did cut you off. I'm yeah. very sorry. Which is but then her- is, is, is on paper the best thing to be. But if you want to just diffuse it and not have to admit your fault, which I think is the American dream, um, find what you know she's insecure about and just wait for her to get done. Wait for the first silence and right. just say, you have a my, big nose. Yeah. Just say that and it'll. she'll never be able to come back. I've seen it happen. <laughs> it's in comedy clubs when they get out. Like It's just you sit and wait until they're all worn out and then you just go, 
Your eyes are kind of close together. Yeah. It has to be something so obvious that you know they get it all the time. I'm not saying it's nice. Right. I'm just saying it's effective. You got to find the most. And I'm just going to say that you're we're that talking your, about your child, effective warfare. Your child's going to know how to do this because <laughs> oh, yeah. you're going to be like, he's going to be three year old. You'd be like, this is how you deal with a heckler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like these are you. the life skills. Like what life skills are you going to be teaching him other than like stage comedy and? and <laughs> I got nothing, man. <laughs> so That's gonna... why he's a piece of shit. How about a strange <laughs> glitch? Sent tons of mysterious text messages to phones nationwide. A strange glitch. Well, how strange. Dude, it doesn't make any sense. How that's why is this they just, That's what they say when it's... My anyway, phone's... this comes to us from HuffPost. And can you open door, read a text message received by HuffPost senior culture writer Zeba Blay. That's not a strange glitch. That doesn't make any sense. That's a strange glitch in the millennial culture. Yeah. On Thursday morning, it was from her mother who was nowhere nearby. Yeah, apparently a, lot, a bunch of people just started getting random ass texts. This is fucking genius. This nice is, looking boy. They, they put this in the phone to create a precedence so that when they put their next glitch out, which is give me your fucking social security number, and they're in court, they can go, there's precedence of weird glitches like this. The phone's a weird glitch. You know your thought process uh, makes me very uncomfortable. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because it's always right after I've smoked a little bit of uh, the devil's begonia, and then he re- he loves to just you, you know what you should pot. It's the devil's begonia. <laughs> I whoa whoa it's uh it is the definitely. You said it was weed. I did. <laughs> what do you? Mean? <laughs> I said it's the uh, it's Hannibal's lettuce, <laughs> Bezel Bub's bacon. I this is know. nonsense. There's no glitch that has perfect grammar like that. Well, that no, none that. of the grammar is perfect. No, it is. It just said, "Can you open the door?" That's pretty good. Yeah, grammar. but the first, the other two said, "Can you?" No, "Can you open door?" Oh, can you open door? Oh, so and then the next off. one, and then the next one said, "Nice looking boy." Nice looking boy. Nothing wrong with that. That's declarative There's, sense. Yeah, it did have an explanation. It's a nice looking boy right there. Right. And then this one just says Dakota. This person got a message, a text message from their husband who had died a few months before uh, that just said Dakota. Fantastic. (laughs) No, don't call it a glitch. Uh, Solve that mystery. Why, that why did you? Why did he travel through the ethos of death and spirit world to text, to Dakota. text Dakota? She needs to go to one of the one of the but, two. But he didn't get which so one? <laughs> which is it? North or south? south. You got to text me. Is it north Fuck, or south? I'm in Sioux City. Is this right? Is this right? <laughs> I wish I had a South Dakota f- fucking city to give you, but uh, it's know. fucking I South Dakota. I don't know which Dakota. I, just I believe it's in, in one of them. It's in North. Okay. You got it. You did it. How about? Uh, how about this for a news story for you? A woman shares weird pickup line that involved man's dead grandmother. This could work. No, this could work. I want to. This is it. This has come from Fox News, and uh, there are a few greater turnoffs than a dead grandparent. A social media user shared an incredibly awkward conversation she had with a stranger online, during which the man allegedly tried out. One of the strangest pickup lines ever. Do you like my news voice that I've really been trying to work on? I liked it right before you asked for my approval. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually saying it sounded pretty good. Yeah, dude, that's yeah. the thing. I'm trying to do the news. Mm. Uh, so I wish it uh, it did say, the exchange starts off with the unnamed man randomly sending Brogan the message. Hey, did you hear about my granddad? She follows up with a confused what? The man then responds, sorry, wrong person. Meant to text a girl I went to school with, but clicked on you by accident. Now thinking straight as my gr- now thinking straight comma you dick shit yeah. straight as my granddad <laughs> passed away sorry this is where things got weird after revealing that his granddad recently passed the would be pickup artist says you are lovely though you single nice now i know what you and i were thinking when Woman shares weird pickup line that involved man's ground. We were both thinking guy in bar walks up to girl and goes, hey, baby, I like that cardigan. My dead grandmother's wearing the same one. Are we bear you know, something like that? that. I was thinking. <laughs> like is, an actual pickup is line. Is Patrick Swayze pushing a penny up <laughs> your wall or are you just happy to see me? There you it? go. Because my grandma's dead. Ghost. Yeah, my grandma's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Unpack that sense while I buy you. <laughs> like that's what we were thinking, right? And that's what we were hoping. But instead, 
he just used it as an in to talk to her. I meant to talk to. Yeah, and it's, for it's, sadist, but, it's more sadistic. It shows that we're better people than he it's is. Got, because, it's very he's sadistic. got perfect plausibility. Yeah. Plausible deniability is all about everyone's afraid. That's why it's hard for people to be a com- comedian these days because nobody wants to be accountable easy. for something. Nobody wants to be accountable for something they say that may be wrong or right. So it's yeah. hard for this guy to actually go after this girl yeah. because she doesn't want to turn around and, and reject him. Yeah. And he needs an out. He needs the safety yeah. of going, it was an I just meant to text it, someone else. It was serendipitous. Like it, it's something, what, I control the fates? Right. I, what, I, I looked at your profile for 20 minutes and then sent you this fucking thing very very contrived I, thought I about. read that a week ago your mother died on your comment and I wanted and to have something I, to connect that with that what happened <laughs> That's, how could you believe that that um, is the perfect t- uh, t- Tim Robinson sketch yeah. that's the perfect but it's um, yeah he's more sadistic than we are um, that that's well it's well played because but this is the real thing that's really quickly I don't believe this cliche that if you get a girl to feel sorry for you that she'll no, have no, sex no, no. with you because I'm a pathetic person and <laughs> I've had very little sex in my life I have yeah. very little I don't know where that pity sex kind of thing comes because from. I'm very pitiable Pitiable. You're very, you're very, and you, you, you make me, me kind of. You, your eyes go right into pity <laughs> eyes as soon as I come in. You just see go, me, and you're like, Ooh. that shirt. <laughs> so, oh, no, no, that's a great yeah, shirt. Thanks, little man. stars. Yeah, little red, white, and blue for a man that's so Canadian. Anyway, that's, we got two I'm more. Com- I'm multifaceted. We have two more uh, little links here, and so you say that is a monkey, right? Mm-hmm. Or LOL? Which one? That's those were my. Fuck LOL. That's, I, you don't like LOL? No. I started using it as I, uh, ironically, like yeah. I don't use it. So I just I know people know that I don't use it, but in doing it so much, now it's it's my thing. That happened to be also you know like the you put your pinky in your thumb out and you do the wiggle yeah, back and loose. forth, hang loose. Mm-hmm. I started doing that as like Sweet. super ironically, but yeah. I ha- I did it so much. Now it's just something I fucking do. You're the hang loose guy. I'm, no, no, <laughs> that's how fucking happens. Dude. <laughs> that's what you are. Fucking. Um, I will no, say. I'm a I, I will say, unlike most people, I'm going to include you on this, even though I don't know your answer. But like you, um, I do like it when people do say LOL in real life because I yeah. think it's honest. When, I, yeah. when I've heard people literally go, "Man, LOL or lol," they'll yeah. say it instead of laughing, and I think that's very honest to their communication and their vernacular. Hi, Percy Mays here with Ultra Screen Clean. You know my brother Billy is dead, but you might not know how he died. Filthy cell phone screen. Ultra Screen Clean is the only filth fighting product that harnesses the cleaning power of Swedish algae. Think there are a lot of germs on a homeless guy's taint? Of course there are, but right now, your cell phone has five times more fill. So if you want to keep using your face as a park bench, have at it. But if you want an ultra clean cell phone and to not die like my brother, Ultra Screen Clean is the answer. My name is David Potter. I tried a lot of different products before this one, and my life totally sucked. But then I came across this one, and I am so happy. I literally cream my slacks on a regular basis. But wait, there's more. If you order now, we will send you an extra month supply free. Ultra Screen Clean, a Popco brand. Um, and you that's why. And that's you why I started. With that. No, I started. <laughs> I mean, I started doing it because. Uh, so I, I I don't think I don't know if it's honest. I mean, what, it's is it honest? honest? It's no, honest no, because that, they they. That's an easy thing to think. Oh, I shouldn't really say, even though I say that a million times oh, texting right, all right, day. Right. I shouldn't say that in real life because people are going to think I'm a div. I you, use, you're okay. Be a div. Like so I, the, I will love you more being a piece being a piece you're of right, shit. Just being like a douche, your baby. As long as you're owning it. Yes, your baby owns being a piece of shit. I'm yeah, gonna he did. Fight that's, for him in yeah. Vietnam. But if he doesn't. I won't fight for him in well, Korea, we'll let alone right. Vietnam. I, I agree. And you know why I love the LOL? Uh, the reason I use the LOL mm-hmm. is because when I type it out, I want people to say it. I don't want people yeah. to go to go think I'm laughing out loud. I want It's always towards something where in this situation, I wouldn't laugh. It would be a lol. Like that's what well, I would. That's yeah. how I would respond. Like I, you know, I'm not laughing. You know, I should. I just think there's a funny. If, situation. if you were in a comedy club and right. you and you hit and you know this is your closer, right? And, right. You, and you said it, and the whole audience is in unison, just went lol. Dude, that would Wouldn't that be fantastic. That would be fantastic. <laughs> but lol. Do I have any other options between is that a monkey and lol? No, it says that is a monkey. Yeah, and then lol. That's my only option. Those are your only options so far. Uh, I'll go with lol. Right, now I'm we throw so everyone off. <laughs> All right, here we go. 
Florida man demands mugshot be removed from Facebook. Deputies replace it with booking photo. <laughs> See? That's where that's you look good. at it and you go, lol. Well, that's, it's, that shows that they've got a, a sad sense of humor. I, I want to know why he demanded it be removed. When deputies in DeSoto County were looking for a Sarasota DeSoto. man, wa- what I say? No, I'm just no, I'm just no. I went to Soto. Like, there's oh, okay. Nothing good I thought you Soto. were correct. Yeah, you're right. County, where lo- we're looking for a Sarasota man wanted in connection to the left. Sorry, to the left. <laughs> the I couldn't be. A, I couldn't it's be a, a fucking leftist, and that's illegal in this it's country. Legal. It's becoming so with Trump. It's <laughs> <laughs> Uh, more than one thousand dollars in merchandise they took a, this, they took to social media posting a, uh, a past mugshot to Facebook. In the screenshot shared, there were Facebook page. It appears Cody Pierce did not appreciate being accused of a crime. Mm. He reportedly wrote the sheriff's office saying, "I have money and it's all legit," and threatening <laughs> that he has a lawyer who is very hungry for a case of slander and defamation of character. He then <laughs> demanded they remove his picture. I love this guy. That was a perfect way to word that. I have money and it's all legit. I think Capone right. is the only person who ever said that. <laughs> and then it goes, I have a lawyer do- hungry like Dude. he's a demon. I have a demon <laughs> lawyer. He's just, he loves eating. And like, he's just, like That was wonderful. That's, like, he, that guy's like a good writer. I need you to go out and find me some slander. He's a good writer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. of character. Oh, I, will, I will cease to exist. And yeah. don't you want all that legit money still? <laughs> <laughs> totally legit. Non-sequential. <laughs> That's why I get you all those bills, all that legit money. That's great. All you have to do is keep feeding me <laughs> defamation cases. Yeah. Genius. Cody thinks, uh, yeah, so uh, Cody Pierce, and this is his, and then they took a picture of his Facebook thing. Um, first off, I have money, and yeah, he, we said and that. it's all legit. And it's all legit. <laughs> Hungry case for defamation of character, especially everything me and my father have done in this area. Word. Now, I would appreciate you removing my picture, nor was in, nor was in any part or connection. Okay, not that great a writer, right, but he's an effective great. writer, I'll say. Right. I'm his a, grammar I'm a, is, yeah. But he's Cody. effective. And, this is, and then the, the DeSoto County Sheriff's Department then say, Cody, thanks for your response. Our agency is glad you understand that we're looking for you. If you would like to come on by the Sheriff's offices, we will be glad to remove your current photo and replace it with your booking photo. Fuck, but that all oh, cap. What a hack, motherfucker. 100 likes. Fuck off. Like him. I, can you give him a like right now? I can't. Oh, this, this is just is a, a picture. picture. This is a screenshot. I think Cody is much more uh, yeah. sympathetic in this. Than this guy. And you know this, what? Yeah. I would have liked it better if they didn't respond and they just did that. Yeah. If that's when that when that when that was what they said, deputies yeah. replace it with booking for. I'm thinking all that, they did, they clever. didn't respond. Yeah, just like, they just fucking change it. There you go. Yeah. We did it. Don't there. We took it down. They, yeah. that, if that's all he said, we took it down. What more do you want? But dude, nobody. That's the thing. Everyone thinks they're a comedian. Everyone thinks they're great. But you don't yes. give away your fucking punchline. Yeah. You don't. That was your punchline. You don't yeah. say your punchline. It's already yeah. been said. You don't say it twice. I, I, th- I've never seen work on stage, but I had to work one day. Is to go, remember that joke I said earlier that was funny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and to get everyone to laugh. I think that would be... Sorry. I'll work it. I'll make it work. Yeah, I think you yeah. can make it work. Yeah. But that, that's what he said. They, it, a victory lap after a joke is... Now, uh, it's pretty... Um, Almost like pretty obvious that it's probably him. You see all the tattoos that he's got on his head. Yo, don't and then even they have the the picture of the security camera that don't he even. like stole. I tell. Do you know how I get out of jury duty? I tell every um, judge is like if any no I, if this happened in a jury, I would not convict him based on this evidence. I would say it's mistaken identity. The same thing happened to me. Right now, because what this there's an extra part here. There's an extra piece of the tattoo. But almost, it's just right? the same thing happens. If you're if you're part of a minority, people think you look the same. So when also when they're white. You point at these things and go like, "Well, who, who, who? What two people would have an eight ball tattoo? Tons of white motherfuckers have, have eight, eight ball, ball. spider webs on your I'm elbows. I'm sick of this shit. Like it's it's the same as racial profiling. Right. I don't. I don't. I would not convict this man. And even though if I was convinced he was completely guilty, because the greater evil, right, is uh, the shit that happens to Asian people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's my. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> That's my first thing. I just, I mean, not for nothing. Being a, both a Jew and Asian, really quickly, everybody who finds out I'm Jewish eventually will want to talk about the Holocaust. Now, here's the thing. I'm Russian Jew. I had nothing, my family had nothing to do with the Holocaust. It's called Ashkenazi Jew, right? I'm actually a non-Semitic Jew. I know it sounds weird, but that's, that's where it comes from. But people will bring that up. No, what no one brings up? What? 
the uh, the the working. I don't want to bring it up. I don't want to yeah. talk about it. Japanese, it makes me uncomfortable. The, my, the my Japanese put, teams, yeah. put into an internment camp. Yeah. No one brings that up. Yeah, my, that's nice, where my dude. dad. It was like a getaway. Oh, it was out. great. Yeah, and um, no one cares about that. No. Asians, no one cares. You got to go on a you know, government paid vacation to Montana. You know why? We're I think we're poor communicators. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's why. I think Jews are such good communicators that every they're like, I feel it. You're all gonna feel it. You know, yeah. like they, you're, I'm gonna keep complaining until I win. But you've got the half Jew thing in you. Yeah. So what about you? you I'm a thing. I'm, I'm thinking I'm a horrible communicator because uh, I think I luck into people thinking they know what I I mean. But I right. I don't think anyone's ever understood what I've ever meant. Do we got to get this? This episode's getting wicked long here. So we gotta. <laughs> Hi, Sammy Mays here with Mega Screen Scrub. My cousin Billy loved to talk on his phone, and that's what killed him. Cell phone grime. It should have been his brother Percy, that piece of shit. Mega Screen Scrub is the only grime-fighting product that harnesses the cleaning power of Norwegian algae. Think there are a lot of germs on a hobo's asshole? Of course there are, but right now your cell phone screen has five times more grime. So if you want to keep using your face as a subway seat, have at it. But if you want a mega clean cell phone and to not die like my cousin, Mega Screen Scrub is the answer. My name is David Potter. I tried a lot of different products before this one, and my life totally sucked. But then I came across this one, and I am so happy, I literally cream in my jeans on a regular basis now. But wait, there's more! If you order now, we'll send you an extra month's supply free. Mega Screen Scrub, a Popco brand. I, again, I'm always surprised that this is like turning into some kind of uh, segment, if you will. Yeah. The, the Craigslist. It's the shtick, the Craigslist It's shtick. my favorite segment. Now, so you you were, you were heard the last week's. So we actually, I didn't do a new one last week because I only posted that, you know, the, the boyfriend, oh, no, no, the, the bodyguard one. Mm -hmm. So I only posted that one a day before we recorded. Mm -hmm. So I let it run throughout the week and we did it last week too, but I did a new one this week. Okay. And I'm excited to tell everybody. So here's the new Craigslist ad. And also, you spooked me, and I told everybody on the last episode oh. how you spooked me about uh, you know, having people call and record them. And I said, fuck it, dude. Nobody listens to this fucking show, and the day that somebody calls in with a lawsuit means I'm actually making money. So fucking let it happen. I can't wait till this is used in a court. <laughs> 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 this and this exact same clip. Which, again, I don't care. It's not, you can't put me away forever. You just want money from me. Take it. I don't give a fuck. I'm doing what I love to do, and you're not going to like ruin my livelihood Mm. Because of one, like because of one guy who's like, "Give me two thousand dollars, fuck it, I don't care." Did that work for the Nazis in Nuremberg? When Just they were kind of say like, "I don't fucking, I'll break the law, I don't care." If what you're, are you gonna take, sir, from if me? you're comparing podcast jokes <laughs> to, to the Holocaust, <laughs> yeah. you're fucking mistaken. I just the trials. <laughs> just oh okay all right guys so here's the new uh psychic reading i have um it says <clears throat> the the headline or the title gives it away free psychic reading sweet uh, I'm in. I have recently discovered after a near fatal car accident that I have unusual psychic abilities. I do not feel comfortable accepting monetary compensation for this gift, but nice. I need to share it. Nice. Please call this number 706-200-1213 and leave a voicemail with a question you would like me to answer with my gift. Please, no texts. I need to hear your voice for my gift to work. Awesome. Are you are you going to now respond to the each thing and give them their psychic reading? I would like it if you did, actually. <laughs> oh, shit. But I That's been my secret plan the whole time because everybody knows that people with autism or Asperger's also are psychic in a lot of ways. Whether you want to deny it or Listen. not, you're psychic. So I thought so the only if person Michael that Jordan could help. was here, you'd have him slam dunk on the contest. Is that what you're saying? If Mike, oh yeah, because you'd he's say like slam dunk. Let me record it. <laughs> right. Do what you're good at, man. That's why you're here. Why else do you think you're here? <laughs> Be the psychic man. Because you're a hand spokesman. Right. And also, yeah, it's not because your ass looks really great in those underwear. The uh, and what's great is the um, I put I and of course with all the postings, I put a picture of. A female on there, so everyone and I never say it's me. People yeah. just see it and they go, "That must be the can, person." Can I see the picture really quick? Uh, sure. Just gonna say because I want to say I I don't find people attractive that people like you. Would I find. also have to try to find somebody who fits like who who would fit this right. Like I now am a psychic. 
Yeah. So no, that's the perfect. picture. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely perfect. I would tell her my secrets. <laughs> you see, she it, has very kind face. No, you picked a good picture. She was, I, she's I, kind. Yeah. So looking. I put I picked somebody yeah. who wa, uh, uh, yes would be nice and who people these guys would be like oh maybe I can but also you know there's some. Some girls are calling because it's now they feel comfortable because mm-hmm. it's a nice part. They feel comfortable. So yeah, I like reducing girls down to that dimension too. <laughs> well, they won't call in because it's a it's a mean looking man, so they want to speak to somebody. Not who's that one dimension. They'll they'll call. Are you kidding me? Oh, well, let's do that for the next one. Let's make the most misogynistic call too. You'll get women to call. Women no, are multifaceted. The, women haven't called on a single one of these. We, like the bodyguard one. I didn't Dude. get any women calling on <laughs> the bodyguard one. What but, are you trying to say? Because uh, that's because they don't have, they don't have confidence. They don't have confidence. Yeah. All right. Well, Not let's until I get you know, my hands on them. <laughs> now, real quick, I've got. Uh, yeah. So let's. Also, with this one, I I did post this this one in New York, so that's where this one was posted. Okay. Um. All right. So let's let's listen. My to... psychic ability is going to say that one of these people are probably going to have be from Chicago originally, I, or maybe in the St. Louis, close to Chicago. You know what I'm, and I my prediction is that somebody's. Blood type has changed. Another <laughs> <laughs> person. Died. All right, here we go, guys. Let's listen to this one, and we will we'll cut off the number there. Hi, my name is Parker. I'm calling you at your ad on Craigslist. I was hoping you could call me back. Bob, don't worry, yeah. you guys. I'm trying to talk seven, over a eight, bit. Oh. nineteen, ten. And all that was it. He did. He he didn't listen to what I said, and what I said was to uh, leave, leave a message about your question. He just said, "Oh, call me." All right, so here we go. He's a nice guy, though. All right. So Hi, my name is Rick, and I found you on Craigslist. Um, sounds like an awesome, awesome gift you have. Uh, I could release that four girl. No, don't. I don't want to hear. None of these guys are like. He just said, "Sounds like an awesome gift you have." Yeah. Finances between now and the end of this year, uh, the start of January, now today, up until uh, the beginning of January. Um, or mid-January. I just want to know how the finances look. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. So, Patrick, with okay. using all of your psychic... Okay, but this how is... is I, I will say, really, just look. full disclosure, it's going to be harder because uh, since I wasn't the one, the picture and the name of the psychic, I'm right, now going to have right. to channel one of my fellow psychics. What was her the name that you gave? What was her name of the lady? Faith. Faith. So I'm going <laughs> to channel... What, so I uh, disavow. This is not my prediction. It's Faith's prediction that I'm going to do my best to channel okay. through. Okay. So but, um, what does Faith say about but, this guy's finances? Just, just to to wrap until... this up. So he's he's worried about his his finances from yeah for for a certain period of time. Um, it's going to be the same as it is now. There you go. Yeah. You heard it here, guys. His, his, it's going to be the same. Let's now listen to somebody from a a different. Let's listen to a different one. Ready? Because I, I like that. I would, let's, but I, well, let's dig into these. Hi. I saw your ad on Craigslist. And Sounds my question Washington. is I would like to know when yeah. I would start yeah. getting clients for my business. Thank you very much. So is she – When is she going to start getting clients for, for her, her business? business? I don't, I, I'm gonna, first, I'm going to have to discern what the, the business is. I'm, I'm I'm getting um, tire repair. Tire repair. So you think she um, owns a tire repair? <laughs> yeah, I I think <laughs> I, I'm sensing there's going to be some road damage near the Chicago area that's going to affect a lot of tires, and um, um, most of that business is going to go to Goodyear. But she might get a, a call or two. Right. Yeah. That's good. I think that's a good outlook. And I think she should get about ready. What, do you, can you put a time on it, like about before the next year, do you think? Yeah, it's going to be within about two to 57 months from now. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's, 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 she'll get um, at least two calls is what I'm thinking. Two, well, to, two to about 16 calls. All right, so here's, here's the next one, all right? Um, and I like that you're very honest and you're very – and that looks – the outlooks – Outlook looks good here, but we got a, a number of these, so let's yeah. really get into it here, okay? Hi, Faith. My name is Terry, and I saw your ad on Craigslist. I um, hope it's not too early to call, um, but it said in your ad just to leave a message. Um, I Once I saw your ad, I thought, this is perfect for me, because I've had a question that's been on my mind for a while now. Um, but basically, um, I'm going out with several different women right now, and um, I'm really embarrassed about 
something that I've always had my whole life, and it's a foot fetish. And I didn't know um, if I should bring that up to them uh, to see if they would be interested in that, like getting a foot massage and things like that. Um, but I've always been kind of shy about that. Um, I just thought I'd ask you and see uh, from a woman's perspective, what do you think about that? My phone number is... All right, so now uh, as you... Oh, da, 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 da. why I want to stop? Oh well, it's God. hard. As I've, I've been channeling Faith in the first two, um, <laughs> the first two responses, and she's given me very little. It's been really hard to. But she's been screaming. She's one of the guys he's dating right now, and no, stop touching my feet is what she says. Uh -oh. like, I, so, the, so like, one of the people. Yeah, uh, she, right. he doesn't even. She doesn't even rec. He didn't even recognize the ad. He yeah, she, he, don't don't touch my feet. Now let let someone invite you to touch. <laughs> Do you think there's any chance that this guy isn't dating anybody and just wants to see if he could see Faith's feet? No, he would say. <laughs> if, if that, if you I don't think, think so? <laughs> what about the grandmother thing? What about the grandmother line that we had earlier? People want plausible not deniability. Listen, then if someone is going to go out of their way to we don't ask know, us for I think our he, psychic gift, they're going to be honest. So you're it's, right. it's, um, he's having a hard time. So you don't think if we got him on the phone. With the most common fetish in the world, he's having a hard time feeling whether or not. With the most common common fetish in the world that is the most common fetish. so he should feel comfortable it it, it um not with faith's feet <laughs> not at all she she doesn't like it um but if he wants to you know this is what i would say uh with with him is uh, if he's feeling uncomfortable about it that's what he needs to examine maybe he thinks it's wrong i know that's not funny but that's the truth he also texted do you want to hear um no <laughs> oh you don't <laughs> Because he texted, he texted a little while, he's, yeah, a little while after, a couple hours after. He said, "Hi, Faith. I called this morning with a foot fat question, and now this was when he said this morning. It's still this morning as he uh, texted two hours later. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to tell you that you could text me your response or call if you prefer, but I may be in a meeting. Also, let me know if you don't cover my issue. I would totally understand. Thanks." Terry, I, I, I really feel like this guy just wants it's his weird long roundabout ploy to, to like just he doesn't have he's not talking to a bunch of people he, he he's not uncomfortable about telling these people he's dating his he's got a foot fetish because he's comfortable enough telling he's us. dead grandmaing us he's, he's, yes if, 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 if I'm, that's if what I'm we're calling it. if I'm stepping out of faith <laughs> and I'm going into Pat yeah he's, he's dead grandma he's, he's totally, he knows. He's he's tried so many ploys that he's he's settled upon. I need to show a vulnerability, mm -hmm. and women and it sucks. But stereotypically, women do respond to vulnerability, and that's what he's playing upon. Was I not playing enough with the role? Should I've been joking more instead of just being real about this guy? Uh, no, I well, what is that a comment? I'm, so, no, I'm, I'm being, talking about I'm, no. I'm being I know honest you're... with him. Yeah. I think he he is yeah. I I, I think you're correct. That he yeah. that he that he wants so. to um, see her feet, but that, I don't need that, to be. Uh, why but, I should have just tried to be funny instead. That's what I'm trying to say. I should have. Should should you have? I mean, I it's know. not that he's not that funny a guy because <laughs> because, because foot fetishes. I have weirder fetishes for right. sure. Like that's that's a real common fucking. I, I don't have a foot fetish because foot, feet are gross. Feet are always dirty. Like so, like that. That's, that's a that's, that's a weird thing. That's what makes thing. him so hot, Patrick. That's the that's the weird thing because there's a hotter, <laughs> dirtier part of the body. That, yeah. No, but I. No, I, would you like to? Tell <laughs> so, but uh, it's it's with this whole thing. Yeah, maybe maybe he is. Um, I would be. I think the the comedy nugget there would be to follow up with him, talk to him, and see where when he finally goes. All right, I'm well, sick of talking to, to you. Are you gonna show me your feet, feet or, or what? <laughs> I think we would need then, like, look if we can find a female to give him a call and see if we can uh, record I can, I that. I can do a female voice. Uh, I've been doing it this whole time. <laughs> doing it this whole time. <laughs> All right, we have two more. In fact, I think there might only be one more because I don't listen to these prior. Which it's. I just do, think it's so much. Do you so think much... foot fetish really quickly? Do you think there's anybody in this day and age? Are, do you, I'm just on the, the the premise really quickly. Is yeah, there yeah. any chance he really thinks? With a guy who found an ad on the internet, so you know he's proficient and has access to the internet. Right, would think that a foot fetish is by any means taboo. It is taboo te to still whom? to whom, like Congress or like a <laughs> or to like your church or to like anybody who, when sex itself is already like ooh, boo boo, like most of culture. If he when was, you start talking to he people, he wouldn't say of his name if he was in church. People in church don't say their name when they're calling fetish things. No. That's. 
everyone knows that. Well, here's an, here's somebody. Here's another one. Are you, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, I say that in My name is Rich. Um, you want to give me a call back? I don't want. We're we're gonna call you back maybe, but we don't want I, your number. I'm I'm really shocked well, by how many people are. Oh my god, I'm he's fr- giving it twice. He doesn't have technology. <laughs> like we have your number. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing is everyone that's you, given have, their have you ever left your number? Like I, I, you, I do I, I do at my job because it's different. Well, you should no, it isn't different. It they is. have your number. No, the, yeah, but it, to get it is 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 way longer, and then if we were, I were just to tell them, they'll figure it out. In sales, the first thing you should realize <laughs> is that they'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's saying, <laughs> sir. All right, is that the one? I think that is the one we just listened to, and um. This one just somebody just texted and said, "Hey Faith, I would like a gift from you." <laughs> oh, okay. A uh, gift. I'm Faith is ready. Is, is oh, that's it's that's just all a text. it says. I like a gift from you. Um, Faith is ready. Her gift is um, the brain injury that was. Are you, are you playing one? Because yeah, so yeah. no, it was the same yeah, one again. No, I want to hear you bit. No, too late. It's, no, there's well, too much pressure on it. Yeah, you're yeah, right. I was gonna fucking say it. It was gonna be genius. Well, now the world will never know how smart Patrick actually was. Guys, if you want Patrick to also divinate your future, you have a question. You can call into not sorry, 706-20 Oh my god. 706-200-1213. Okay. And uh Mr. Patrick O'Hulahan will absolutely and I can like all psychics though they we usually keep this uh, under wraps, but I can channel any psychic you would like. So if you want Miss Cleo to give you the, is he incarcerated? For, I can give you Miss Cleo's for less money. I can channel her and just cast the savings on to you. Did you know she died? I can't believe you just trampled over that amazing premise I just said. Of like, I was just well because I looked her up the other day, knowing that we were going to talk about it. That's not nearly as interesting. <laughs> that's not nearly as interesting as I just, I just, for just the top of my head came up with. If you're a psychic, I know you can channel other psychics. Why not come on and go? Don't give Miss Cleo twenty dollars. I'll channel Miss Cleo and I'll give her out for, for fifteen. For fifty, dude, like, that's called undercutter psychics. Yeah. Undercutter psychics. Undercutter, yeah. So, okay, she died. Is that so impressive? I thought I, <laughs> everyone I would, dies. It's I think not an it's impressive 100%. feat. You're right, but it's it's that it happened and we no, didn't realize it, and she was alive very shortly ago. It's so it's just the thing with psychics, and this is where they fucked up because they Uh-oh. could they could easily they could easily <laughs> rope me in as well. Is they need to create a greater world. They don't establish a world of how psychics work every psychic you meet has different rules oh i can talk about this i can make i can make someone think about you i can't make them fall in love and they all have different rules you need to have an estab one guy needs to make one step like, estab- like an l ron hubbard that kept the established rules of psych and it would then ground it just like tolkien and then you would have a subset of people going to conventions that would go to the psych. Go, i already understand the parameters let me tell you what this is right and ground it ground your fucking scam and you would have whoa 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 ground your what your 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 gift <laughs> <laughs> there you go that's what i said anyway uh producing our new book the yeah. physics 101 physics psychics, psychics. <laughs> the physics of psych psychic the physics of psychics yeah, of psychic, psychicism, psychicism. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's going to be very grounded um i will never lie to you is the thing is if you go i will it, it'll never be a lie everything i tell you is the truth and i think you'll find that you knew it all along you knew it yeah yeah. It was in your heart. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll check out, let that one run because I did. Because you're just p- as smart as I am. I don't know. That's how you sell it. Oh, okay. That's, That's how, how you sell it. Tell them <laughs> right. <that> they're smart. <laughs> <laughs> you're very smart. Hey, Greg, did you know that Popco makes the top fireproofing brick used in crematorium incinerators? I did not know that. But I did just read that they are also the leading producers of matchbooks, women's shoes, and public school lunches. Wow, great stuff. That's right, they are our favorite sponsor because they send a big check and only ask us to remind you all that they own 63% of all American brands. And because of this wide and sweeping reach, if you are eating, sleeping, alive or dead, Popco would like to thank you for your continuous support. So uh, we are sitting here, waiting, f- awaiting um, Malcolm J. Brenner, the author of Wet Goddess: Recollection of a Dolphin Lover. 
and I'm waiting to get a hold of him. He, we've been communicating through emails, and uh, he said just a few moments ago that he's all ready to go, has Skype pulled up, but uh, for some reason when I attempt to call him, it is... It's not. It's saying that he's offline. So let's let's hope we can get in touch with him. I'm actually pretty anxious, pretty nervous to to speak with this guy. And now, yeah, I I really hope uh, I hope he can get a, a decent interview and it's not too uncomfortable and awkward. You know what I mean? I'm hoping I'm hoping we have a lot of fun and uh, we get some some good. Uh, I want to make this guy. Uh, I want to make Malcolm laugh. If I can make him laugh then this whole this whole interview has been good even if it's a, a, a an uncomfortable forced fake laugh <laughs> i want to make him chuckle cuz if he doesn't realize that his you know like his experience is obviously very different and out there and he's he's got he, he has had to have come to terms with that let's see if we're getting anything from him he's had to have come to terms with that because you know it's just there's no way he's he's can be defensive about what has happened or what he's done. Uh, I mean, he wrote a book about it for God's sakes. So I'm really hoping that uh, we can get through to him and we we can do an interview with him. But I'm not going to keep tearing up the time without him. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop on that. Give me an intro or whatever. You yeah. Think that- so here we are. We are with Malcolm J. Brenner, author of Wet Goddess. Recollection of a Dolphin Lover, and I gotta okay, so I gotta tell you, uh, Malcolm, I your so your book you wrote it in what 2009 2010 is when it came out. Um, I started it in 1973. If you're really interested. Oh, well, of course, it yeah. But 30, it took me 37 years to write, but actually it only took 24 years because there were 13 years when I put it aside. Right. After showing the manuscript to an Australian writer who gave it back to me and said, you need to go back and reread Aristotle's Ars Poetica. And, and why Why would he want you read. to do that? Huh? Why would, why would he want you to do that? What, what help would you because have? The, the base, my book violates the basic principles of drama or something. But this is a story. But what actually happened is I became a journalist. Right, right. And I really learned how to write. Uh, and, you know, I trimmed, I trimmed my sights down considerably. I ended up throwing away about as much material as I published. Which, I mean, I think that's pretty on par with, with just about any medium, you know, if they're making a movie or uh, writing material. It's, yeah, there's always it, so much more left on the floor than is, and is produced. I, I was trying to compete with Melville, who's got the greatest... Uh, word opening in existence and you really can't compete with that. And what is that? Call me Ishmael. <laughs> Call me Ishmael, Dick. that's right. So yours, no. you're, but he never he never made love with the whale. Uh, however, <laughs> well, um, uh, as far as we know. Dolphins are a category of whale. They are cetaceans. Right. The cetaceans are divided into two groups, the Balinoptera and the Odontocetes. Right. I would, and of course. All, all the dolphins and the, the toothed whales are in the Dondo City. Right. And I would imagine I would I wouldn't expect anything less than you to know as much as possible about all the different types of whales and subspecies and all that different kind of thing. Uh, I now so let me so when that book was finally released in 2009 2010, uh, it became very popular very fast because it's it's a pretty intense story. And I remember I saw a, a, a blog that someone had wrote on their own personal website, and then somehow it found it to the, to the website Reddit. And it, it, it just uh, went crazy. Everyone was talking about it. And it also it sparked a lot of other people to kind of come out and, and um, you know, tell about their own stories. And have you, have you ever – let me ask you this, because if anybody wants to hear your story, I almost think it would be better for them to read your book – or to uh, watch, you had me watch a, a, a documentary that where you kind of short, sh- tell your tale a little bit of, of a shortened version of your tale. Yeah. Right. So, and it's, you know, and if you want, can you actually give us maybe like a, a shortened version of that right now? Like how you met Dolly and 
where you were and everything. This episode of Road Soda is brought to you by ByMoodLand.net. Hi, I'm Larry Bird. Due to a government loophole, I now own half the moon. All of the front part. The Chinese own the rest. What am I going to do with a whole half a moon? That's why I'm selling it to you by the acre. That's right, Moonland. It's an investment. You can till it, develop it. Why don't you start a garden? Some folks like to lease their Moonland. The Indians used to think we were stupid to own land. Boom, boom, pow, wow, can't own land. <laughs> but now who's stupid? Not you. And you gotta stay that way by purchasing moon land at $1,500 per acre. I know what you're thinking. Larry, only $1,500? Are you sure you're not stupid? I'm not. I just want to make sure you don't disappoint your kids by leaving them with something useless. Like heirloom jewelry. Don't disappoint your kids. Buy the most luxurious space property in space. www.buymoonland.net Buy some Moonland today. Well, to do that, I have to give you a little further background. On that. Okay. Um, my parents had a very strange belief system. It's okay. something called Orgone Energy. It's an Austrian psychiatrist who will write you the secrets of and a few psych of her souls. Besides him, that he authorized the practice of and one of these people who was my treat, treating me for allegedly the stress of a difficult birth was in fact a serial pedophile, a very sadistic man who had slipped right under Wright's nose and uh, like, you know, a wolf uh, in the fold did incredible damage to, uh, I don't know how many children, uh, several hundred. Oh, including, um, including yourself, other, other, obviously. Other authors have written about the same person. Uh, Lorna Ruff, who is Judy Garland's daughter, has several pages about her autobiography, Me and My Shadows. Uh, so, I was uh, molested by this man, and my mother uh, was a very wounded personality in her own way. She had suffered a very horrible childhood deprivation and orphanage. Where, where were you born? Where did, where, where did you grow up? I was up? born in Chris Amboy, New Jersey, but my father um, was from a, a, a well-to-do Jewish family in New York. At least they did well to do before the crash of 29, you know. Right. And she was from uh, a, what, had, what had been a wealthy family uh, because her father was a professional hard hat diver and a hotelier, and he died in the influenza plague. 1918 or so, leaving her and her mother, who died when she was eight, and she was given to a nunnery. Oh, wow. Uh, let's just leave it at that. She was, she came out pretty twisted. I don't think, yeah, I, I've, as far as I understand, I don't think anybody given to a nunnery is, comes out uh, normal-ish, as whatever that can be, however you define normal. No. Okay, so that was so you're born in in Perth Amboy up in New Jersey. Well, yeah, and uh, the first the first time I became aware of that I had a different sexuality than other people was when my father took me to see the Disney film The Shaggy Dog, as you know if you saw the movie. Correct. Yeah. And uh, I there's a scene where this teenager is dancing with this buxom girl. He's changing piece by piece into a dog. It's, it's it's funny, and then he finally runs out with a fat tuxedo and you know the uh, pants still on. Uh, it, it's a very funny to see, and I found myself having a wrench. So let's just say, jump cut now. I've had a zoophilic tendency all my life. Right. But I didn't want to be a zoophile any more than some kid who finds. Gay, you know, or she's gay, wants to be gay. Right. I mean, but, you know, it's 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 you you want to you're you find it right. It's it's more of a it's more of a, a a cultural or societal thing that's telling you it's wrong, and that's where the conflict arises. Obviously, your uh, whether it arose, there was maybe a tendency in you already that arose from a, a great stress tri childhood. But however it is, I mean, here we are now. You realize that you are uh, uh, different, 
than most people and know that neither male nor female is something that sexually arouses you. So how do you find yourself, what were you doing, how, how did you choose to even go to new college? What was the reason behind that? That's funny because I was, oh my, it seems like the speakers are on here. I was offered a full scholarship to Cornell and uh, it's in Ithaca, New York, you know, and the winters up there are awfully long and hard and they don't have any beaches. Sarasota that was like a place to be. Oh, of course. Now, if I had gone to Cornell and accepted that scholarship, I would have, I could have met Carl Sagan, who was teaching there at the time. Yeah, but then you wouldn't have met Dolly. Well, I don't know to what extent, uh, you know, that, that timeline happens. Uh, no, I, well, yeah, I wouldn't have met Dolly. I wouldn't have met Dolly. It's that simple. Right. But uh, I was going to New College, uh, which was basically a hippie to be the arts school that maintained a rather rigorous biology department. I was a professor there. And uh, I was a sophomore, which meant I had made it for my first year. And I wanted, uh, actually, somebody contacted me. Uh, I was introduced to this woman author who had written a book about the dolphins down at Florida land, which was this you know, pre Disney era yeah. uh, old Florida type. I'll park. tell you that most people that live in Florida don't even know that Florida land ever existed. No, so many people have come down here from elsewhere and never heard of it. Um, I would like to tell uh, WTCU, Public Affairs Station in Fort Myers, to do a documentary about it where they have other Florida places. But they don't like to hear from me. I wonder why. Let's just say there were little. Let me tell you a story. Um, I kind of got out when I did an ambush interview with Buffalo Love Sponge. And right. I think this was in uh, yeah 2011, right after a video with me came out. And uh, it was long. It lasted 27 minutes before his partner got so insulting that I said, you know, I don't have to talk about this shit. Right. Hung up on him. Of course. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but, um, but that real lot of advertisers uh, for a magazine that I had a gig with, I was writing many stories and doing lots of photos for them. But if I were, but the advertisers said that if they didn't drop me from the roster, they would pull their pants. Yeah, I mean, look, man, it's it's not. I mean, obviously, you're you're very well aware of how against society your you know these tendencies are, and whether it's right or wrong, or wh who whoever's right or wrong, it's you know you can't blame the people that that are one way or the other. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm not. I didn't. I didn't invite you here to interview you to make fun of you or insult you in any way it's it's purely a curiosity piece but i mean you've got to you 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 obviously have to have enough insight to understand well, that it's it's strange it's out there i mean you're definitely on the other side of the fence from a lot of a lot of people here's the thing i've had vastly more experience with females of human kind homo sapiens than I have with other species. I've been married twice, you know, the first time for a total of 12 years, although we only live together for nine. And the second time for six years. So, you know, that's not um, a, a smaller marginal part of my life. Of course. And uh, both of my wives knew about my relationship with the dolphin, and they accepted it up to a point. Uh, Did they think it was just something novel that happened one time, or were they ever like, you know, were they ever worried that that something would happen no, again, or like was no, there? No. Um, if you're smart, you can incorporate it as a fantasy into your sex play. 
Right. And so w were they aware that that's something that you were doing? Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, then, hey, check that out. There's your woman. That's why. That's who you marry. That's uh, I guess. So so yeah, you you get asked by this author uh, to to uh, take some pictures because she's writing an article on the dolphins in Dolphin Land. She's writing a book. She wants book. to write another book about dolphins. The first book was a children's book. It was sold so so. Mm -hmm. She got a photographer from New York who did covers for like uh, you know. Um, Glossy magazine, uh, he didn't like his pictures because he used the fill flash when they had layer on them. Dolphins were wet all over, eyes you know, all over the big membrane. I, I took the pictures and I used natural light pretty much because I didn't know any better. But my pictures were more natural, I think she liked that. Anyway, I was introduced to Dolly. Dolly was unique. Do this, this, any this part was unique. Was built on two levels. They had a dolphin pool. Mm -hmm. It was built up on a, uh, a like a levee of land, and then they had a series of pools at uh, it, on the coast, you know, at at tide level, uh, and uh, you know enough enough depth to you know support the dolphins a little higher. Dolly was the only dolphin outside the U.S. military. I was told at the time who was trained to go in open water and return. Right. And she did. She did several times a day. Yeah, which you which say means... this dolphin was a helpless cat. You're right. Factually wrong. And they're wrong. And they're not interested in finding out. Well yeah, of course. Now, I mean you have so so a lot of dolphins you're right are, are fact are are held captive because they're taken out of the wild at uh, an adult age, but I would assume, or, or I would, I think it's safe to assume that Dolly was probably born in captivity, and the only thing she knew. No, no. she was. I know this for a fact. She okay. Was captured as a wild dolphin because I knew the trainer. Okay, so she was captured at, at a as a wild dolphin. I mean it, and she, but I I would also agree that yes, she was. Uh, she was willingly staying there because at any given point she could have. She could have left. Do you know at yeah. what age that she was captured at, at, captured as a, as a wild dolphin? Yeah. What age um, was she captured as a wild dolphin? Uh, one has to wonder why. If confinement was so odious to her, did it serve some purpose to her to come back? Well, what dolphin lover the movie didn't get into when it's 16 minutes was the fact that I had extensive what you might call telepathic contacts with this film. Several different kinds of them. While I was away from her, while I was around her, while we were making love, and strangely enough, after I learned that she had died. Right, right. Which I, I did. You you mentioned in the in that in that. Uh, now, would you have you ever experienced that with anything else, be it an animal or a human? I've never had experiences like that with a human. I, I'm talking strictly just like the telepathic kind of connection that you were. Yeah, talking. well, the Scientologists were in how to do it a little bit. You, let, me, let me tell you, I practiced Wicca for 20 years. I think I know a little bit about it. One time I had um, a, a high priestess draw down uh, the moon on me. And it, mattered, it was a very interesting experience because it felt like my mind was in a goldfish bowl where I could see everything that was going on. I couldn't do anything about it. Uh, but the entity proved to be benign. And it was um, what you might call uh, the addiction god thought or Hermes uh, Trismegistus, or Mercury, or, uh, you know, uh, it was, it seemed to be very ancient. Uh, I, I can just give you impressions. I know this is, you know, not scientific numbers and everything. I sort of bemoan in the book the fact that I don't have that about the dolphin, but I don't. I've got this story, like a UFO witness. And uh, I'm going to tell it. Right, of course. Now, let's, let's proceed with the uh, uh, Dolly, who's also a dolphin that people went swimming with. 
that came to the park. The rest of the dolphins were pretty much males and stuff like that. For some reason, I don't know. It's a random cat. Um, uh, but she was mostly the gentlest of all the dolphins. So, uh, after waiting a while for the weather to warm up, uh, I went in with her. And uh, she... Dolphins like to be rough because they have skin, but the blades that, that, that kills off the little particles and makes them move faster. And uh, so she came to me for rubbing. She came to me for an after, wait a second, yeah. I couldn't coax her to come in at first. And I went through this thing where I thought about my hands and, you know, I just sort of thought at her. I don't know how to describe the directed thought at her, but I did not expect any results. Uh, and uh, I happened to let how a man might use his hands in foreplay with a woman slip through my mind. She kind of stopped at that and came over and acted very gently. And I erupted her. And then she began moving forward and, and rolling over. And uh, I ended up rubbing her up. This term has caused so many comments on YouTube. Genital slip. Well, it's, that's what it's called. It's, that's what it's called by marine biologists. So I use that term. The C word, the P word, or the D word. Be that as a thing. Um, this was embarrassing to me. See, I didn't want to be a zoophile. I hadn't accepted myself in that role yet. So, you know, I tried to discourage this. I met a young woman. I brought her down. I was taking pictures, by the way, of all this. Other stuff. Dolly, Dolly was a fantastic performer. I mean, her jumps were phenomenal. She could take a fish out of her trainer's mouth, 11 feet above the water, jumping alongside a moving riverboat. And she had to correct for anything that happened between the time she left the water and the time she got to the trainer's face, because otherwise she would smash it. It was quite a show. I mean, this was, you know, they did this at Disney, they use all animatronic robots now. Not robot dolphins, robot trainers. Well, they also believe it's very inhumane to keep dolphins captive at places like SeaWorld and just about anywhere. I mean, most places, it's I believe it's uh, illegal now. Now, here's one thing that differentiated. Now, there are other people who have had telepathy with dolphins. Yeah, like John I C. Went... Lilly. That's all he did was research telepathy with dolphins. John C. Lilly? Um, no. No, he didn't. In fact, he told me uh, that he didn't want to in investigate telepathy with dolphins because he wanted some kind of translation device where yeah, you that didn't would have him... to be special right. to, uh, to get messages from him. I'm talking about, like, mind to mind. First, I didn't know what was going on. The first time I experienced Dolly, I, I, said, I had gone to the beach with a bunch of friends from New College, and I seem to remember trying to roll a joint on a sand dune on a windy night under a streetlight. And all of a sudden, my hands became part of like a David Attenborough documentary about this strange creature with these arachnoid appendages. Quite unique in the owl. And uh, how they were doing this incredibly complex task, the creature was highly motivated. Blah, blah. And then, you know, I had this really kind of said to uh, my companion, that's weird. I said, that's weird. Oh, it seemed for a minute there like somebody else was in my head. So weird. So, so, so. Later on, we're driving home in our, 
I realized it was using me like a remote sensing device. That's a very good feel. And I, you know, I did talk to it. And it responded. Right, so what but you're saying I, is you I had... Said, you felt anyway, like something else yeah. was perceiving through your body is kind of what you're, exp you're what you're yeah. explaining right now. Yes. Okay. And was this was this post like you had already met Dolly and you were experiencing this, or is this just another story aside? Yes, from... but I didn't. I hadn't put two and two together and gotten 537. Right. So you had met Dolly, is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. And so your belief at this point now is that. It was Dolly's connection to you perceiving your world through you. That's, oddly enough, the most probable hypothesis. Okay. I, look, I'm not trying to, again, I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to get to the point of, like, what we're talking about. Well, you, You're free to talk else, about whatever you want. I'm not, I, I, yeah. I'm very open to the possibility or the plausibility of any of this kind of stuff existing so you don't have to you really don't have to tiptoe around what you're saying as if i'm somebody who's going to belittle it or or tell you that it's wrong or couldn't happen or exist i'm so, sorry if i'm doing that i don't mean to it's just that 95 I, I, that's what i completely understand you've got a lot this. of preconceived notions about how people handle your story and about how people handle just your your your, your situation in general so i i completely understand but that's why i'm just letting you i'm letting you know uh, you don't you don't got to tiptoe around it. You don't you don't got to worry about me going. Oh, that's that's bullshit or that's impossible. Please don't don't worry about that. Uh, but yeah, so so that's so you're saying that you have a, a very a very strong connection with uh, with Dolly so much so that she is per, she she is telepathically or, or tele yeah telepathically connected to you and now perceiving you. And this was after you just had, had met her, right? You didn't, at this time, you had not uh, uh, made love with her, right? Right. Okay. It took a while for me to figure out that it was her contacting me. But when I did, uh, all I can say is that she seemed happy in the same way that a dog trainer who's been training a really stupid dog feels when they finally get the trick right. Right. He was happy that way. Okay, and you would be the dog in this situation, right? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, let me ask you this. When, with, so, so Dolly had a lot of people that she was interacting with. She was interacting with, you know, loads of people uh, uh, every day because you said that she was the dolphin that people would swim with. And also well, she had they a number of... Uh, they didn't have any kind of a swim with dolphins at the place. Okay, I well, knew the train. That's why yeah. I got the swim. Okay, I understand. So... You did, uh, but there were trainers and, and whatnot that would swim with her. Now, did any of the other... There was a head trainer and a, you know, a, a second in command and some guy who trained and owned part of the park or something. I don't know. Right. But you know, what I'm but, saying is there were there were a, a number of people all swimming with Dolly. And what I'm trying to get at was there, did she act or interact with anybody else in any of this kind of fashion that you know of? Yeah. The other dolphins or other people? Uh, the other people, well, I, I would assume she would act that way with the other dolphins. I mean, dolphins are very sexual creatures in general, uh, having sex yeah. with multiple partners multiple times a day. Yeah. Um, what I ended up finally getting from was the strong impression that she did this to everybody. But I was the only person who responded the way I did, even though I tried not to show it. Right. She was aware of it. She was, okay, which that is, see, di dolphins are obviously hyper-intelligent creatures, probably in many they, ways more so than a person. And, well, yes, listen, listen for a second, okay? In their current form, the same size brain, they've been around for 12 million years. Humans, homo sapiens, maybe at the outside, two hundred thousand. Right. So obviously, why why fix it if it is if it's not broken? Uh, uh, there's no sense to evolve further if that's you know, uh, if if that's all they need, that's oh, all it is. Whatever whatever they're doing, they must be doing something right since very few other species. I mean, they are the most ancient lineage of mammals we have. Right, you're talking about dolphins specifically or just whales? The whole cetacean family. They are the most radical.
radically adapted away from the typical four-legged uh, mammalian form. Right. And form, I could put in here, is the whole reason why um, that uh, Spanish director uh, can win uh, the Academy Award for The Shape of Water. And uh, I get, you know, booze and uh, butt kicks for uh, like goddess. Right. If you may love with something that's basically anthropoid, has two arms, two legs, and a head, just as needed, um, it's, it's okay somehow. They can have a few scales or whatever. You know, it looks like a kinder, gentler version of the creature from the Black Lagoon. Right. I think you can still go win the Academy Award. Yeah, but and I mean, you're also do. missing a big, big difference in that yours actually happened. Yours is a real reality thing, and the other one is make believe. I think I think people would be more Very readily ex- so. able mean, to I- accept a make-believe story about someone making love with a dolphin over a real story of someone making love to a dolphin. It's the fact that it really happened I think a lot of people have more trouble grappling with. Well, as I admit uh, in uh, one of my opening statements, uh, most of it happens to be true. I think I changed only enough so I wouldn't get sued by the various people I'm writing about. Um, and uh, so far I haven't, uh, most of whom are still alive. Uh, and uh, so that's why I made it a novel rather than a, a memoir. Or right. Also, I feel a little more comfortable writing a novel, even though there isn't much difference between me, Zachary Zimmerman, who's the parent. Right, of course. Now, and when so so when your book finally came out, that was when. So the people in your own life, let me ask you this: so the people in your own life knew about this, obviously. Like this was something that you felt comfortable telling your wives and and other people, I guess, that were close to you, correct? Before the book came out, right? Um, I tried to tell my parents. We were separated at the time about it uh, shortly after a uh, spill alert learned that the dolly died in captivity. Right, right. Um, and uh, I was on a walk with my father in the country. He listened to me. He was silent for a minute, and then he turned and pointed to a field and said, oh, look, there's a big, beautiful flock of birds. My mother tried to relate it to some Greek myth, which I can't remember. Well, you know, humans having sex with other creatures. Right. I say animals because it makes it sound like we're not animals. Pardon me, you know, but I'm proud of my mammalian heritage. Right. You're, yeah. you're right. And there is this there is this this human tendency to separate e- ourselves from the rest, uh, you know, for obvious reasons. But it, in general, you're right. We are all animals. How about interspecies? Uh, sure. Maybe be a better, more specific way to explain it. But so when this book came out, it's basically like you know this this now it's out, right? So now people really know. And when this book came out. Did you have you had since then? Have you had other people approach you with their own per, with their own experiences? Yes. Um, there's only one person, however, that I'm absolutely sure did. So you think everyone else is just making it up that they that they had sex? Well, I'm not person? saying ninety percent of the people that claim to were BSing me. Right. I could tell from various things they said. This one person had a video today about that it happened outside the U.S. So, um, yeah, I was pretty sure that was him. Right, so he was able to, he actually filmed it. Now, was he making love with a male or a female dolphin? He was making love with a female dolphin. He was doing it differently from the way I thought I and Dolly did. Right. Was this uh, dolphin, was that dolphin in captivity or was that, was that a wild dolphin? No, it was in captivity. Right. In 
a, uh, an ocean area. European country. And uh, they made love on sort of the beaching ramp that pools have. Right. So the dolphins slid most of the way out of the water, and the guys slid partly into the water, and they laid side to side. I don't know where they put down a blanket or something, so they didn't get concrete burns. Right. But uh, they made love that way. I think, yeah, half and half. That's how, that's how mermaids are made, right? <laughs> that's uh, one of the standing jokes on YouTube. Of course it is. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, I made it's love low with hanging uh, fruit as far as the jokes go. In fact, I even. While I was making love to the ball, I was, you know, the final stage of our courtship, we were just getting our minds as well as our bodies synchronized. I, I did, uh, she had already put herself in physical danger to get into a pen where a male dolphin she had been penned up with was jealous of me, right to tank me, uh, which no, she slithered through a very narrow space between two boards. She didn't, you know, if the dolphin gets stuck in there, and I was worried she would get stuck, Right. Uh, you, you can try to tear the boards apart with your bare hands, but chances are everyone asphyxiate. Yeah. Uh, but she went through. She, she knew she could do it. And uh, we had fun to see because the other dolphin wouldn't pop. So the other, the other, the male dolphin on the other side wouldn't, he wouldn't go through the boards? Right. But uh, he could still, interestingly enough, hear what was going on. Of course. Maybe, you know, maybe at the end of the day, he didn't really care too much. Because honestly, uh, uh, I'm sure he could have tore the boards he up and he, w- he could have done a number on had already proved herself uh, jealous when I brought a, a girl I wanted to impress down to the park. A girl I just met. You know, show her a good time. Uh, the dolphin smashed smashed the shell into the girl's face, and I had to rescue her. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I rescued her by throwing an arm around the dolphin, and mobilizing it, and I told the girl to get out of the water. I didn't grab the girl and try to pull her away, so that would be her vulnerable to attack. Right, right. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know I uh, know that male dolphins will uh, kill the offspring of a female's to make them ovulate so that they are, you know. That's, that's been observed in Shark Bay, Australia, I think. Or maybe some other parts, too. I don't know. Well, off the Scottish coast. It's not universal. It doesn't happen to this popular population of dolphins here or in Sarasota Bay. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, would, you, could, you would assume it's a cultural thing, you know, like the dolphins yes, have their own culture. Yeah, it's a cultural thing. thing. So, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Have you have you ever had since then? Have you ever had any connection with an, with another dolphin? I never had the circumstances again. The park was eventually sold to a real estate developer who made it into a place called Sorrento Shores, which is a community I can't even go in there. Right. The dolphins. The dolphins were all sold off. And then I got sold to a place called Gulfport Marine Aquarium in uh, Gulfport, Mississippi. Yeah. Where uh, I stayed away from her longer than I should. I had a very vivid dream one night. I well, in the morning, I, I woke up literally with my heart stopped and I could breathe. And the dream was of dolphins in a very dark, tomb-like environment, multitudes of dolphins in these square boxes, uh, and they were all decayed. As near as I can determine, that was about within two weeks of when she actually died. And I'm one of those people who think that, yes, dolphins can commit suicide. They do so by holding their breath. Dolphins are conscious breathers. They have to be awake to breathe. They sleep in half their brains at a time, so the other half can breathe. Right. And uh, if they hold their breath until they go unconscious, they asphyxiate. So the trainer said he just, you know, he, he dealt with a period of depression in her. He was giving her, you know, some vitamins and the opposite. But she was getting better. And then uh, one day he just came out and found her dead on the bottom of the pool. 
Right. This episode of Road Soda is brought to you by White Castle PCS. White Castle PCS, your favorite fast food restaurant, now offers even faster cell service. Come in for the royal treatment, the sack of sliders and a cell meal. It's the only meal that comes with a smartphone, the Whiteberry. The Whiteberry is the fastest fast food smartphone on the market. Unlimited talk, unlimited text, and unlimited taste. White Castle PCS offers cell coverage within 20 yards of all White Castle locations. Text using white tap and you get 25 percent off our mouth-watering slider sacks come for the sliders stay for the cell service white castle pcs so you obviously you, you know they're they're competent enough to be depressed and to be lonely and sad i mean there's no doubt about it but at that time you know this was the 70s people had a very different view of just about all animals then they're only just starting to understand now I mean, it's only now that they're starting to understand the, the emotional intelligence uh, of some of these animals, like like dolphins, and the yeah, fact so that they I, shouldn't be in, in captivity like that. And... I think that um, the first stirrings of that uh, were really in the early 70s. Right. That's when you, uh, you could say, in effect, it was part of the New Age movement, even though New Age is really a misnomer. Uh, much of that is, you know, all day control, Adam Levax being recycled. I got out of Wicca, by the way, after 20 years, because I had a spell that went enormously successfully and fulfilled my needs. And I realized it was not reproducible under any circumstances. And what was that? Can you explain that? I did a spell for money. And I was actually contacted by Time Magazine to shoot the photo of a Navajo uranium mining protester. So I did, and I got paid $400 for it. But I got the job only because the regular photographer was out of town and could the phone that day. And so for that, so for what reason did you stop practicing Wicca? Because that. If that worked, would you not do it again? I mean, that's the point. You can't do it again. And there are too many factors that are irreproducible. Okay, so and so because of that, you decided just to stop, stop practicing Wicca. Well, yeah, it applies. I mean, it applies to everything people do. Whether you do a magic spell or call it a prayer. I don't care what you call it. All appeals to supernatural beings right. are essentially, uh, you know, I think it was um, the guy who wrote Conan who said it, you know, the gods answer all prayers, but the answer is most frequently no. Right. Um, I'm, I'm convinced that there is no God. Nobody is running things. By the Holocaust. You know, and if that doesn't work, there was Stalin's massacres in the Ukraine. You know, people started. I mean, if God has, if God, God either has no power over Earth, or God doesn't care. Right. But anyway, what really freaked me out is that right after I learned about Ruby dying, and I learned about it in a very shocking way, this somebody, a, a relative of the authors, uh, told me about it, and. Uh, Everything kind of like froze for a minute while I decided whether to fall down on the floor of the college, um, you know, student center. I decided not to. Things came back to life. Uh, but uh, the next day she came back, uh, and I, you know, uh, I was getting high at the time. I was, I was falling. I needed something to stop uh, crying about. And, uh, so I got it, and uh, it's like she was there. And I said, wait, 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 you're dead. She said, well, it's different from us. <laughs> and I said, right, it's dead. And I, had a, I, I can believe that maybe I was in telepathic contact with a wise thought. But believing in you too much. The right. dead. Um, eventually, she got to be so much of an emotional problem. Because you can't heal. Uh, if somebody
Somebody keeps coming back from the dead. <laughs> you just can't. They're not ripple, but you, they don't mean to. You can make a ripple, you can just an emotional wound every time. And uh, I, I said, I'm very sorry, you know, but Dr. Jack, you like, you know, you're losing yourself. When she got uh, moved to Gulfport, did you did you go and visit her at all? I visited the place afterward. No, I was at Evergreen College. Right. I was serious about completing my turn there because my standard modus operandi at the time, if I didn't like something, I went to split. But I was determined to stick it out. That's why I didn't, you know, hitchhike back from uh, Olympia, Washington. Gulfport, Mississippi, which I would have had to do uh, to find out what was going on. Right. I, I basically, I thought I thought there was a psychological interpretation for the dream image. I can visualize. Mean, you know, it's obviously a, a more common for you to think that than to assume or or you know understand that it was some kind of telekinetic connection that you had um malcolm have you ever had any you, know, you mentioned earlier some experience uh, you know ufos and that kind of thing have you ever had experiences with ufos or the supernatural yes have you been abducted have you been have you had a a uh, a close I, encounter like i've never seen a ufo with the naked eye but I took a picture, several pictures, of something very odd in the sky on what was called Kodak Color Ectochrome Infrared Film. Right. This was a film that was specialized for shooting plants, determining the health of the plants. It photographed in the near infrared range and had three colors. So you got these weird, uh, depending upon how you filtered it, you got these weird color effects in the sky. And I was shooting this because I had theorized that maybe we could see the, the orgone energy being drawn in by one of these Reichian cloud clusters, which I was photographing for another man scientist, not the one who tortured me. But, right. Uh, and where was this? Where were uh, these photos that you took? Was this in Hotstown, Hotstown, Pennsylvania? So it was in Pennsylvania, and you were taking pictures of, of people cloud busting or or yeah. And what did you what did you capture in the photos? I captured something in the sky that was between me and the clouds. But it looks it looks like a ring of kind of orangish light with a not quite closed with a little bright point of light at one of the open ends. And it appears in different orientations in different photos. I showed it to a bunch of Kodak technicians, and they said, yeah, it's nothing we did in processing. And uh, I sent it, I made the big mistake, I sent it to a guy named Jim Delatoso, who looked at it and said, wow, this is like nothing in my data bank of 10,000 items didn't tell me he was going to keep the slides, which he has. But he kept them? Is he still alive? Do you have any, any way of contacting him? You don't have duplicates of the of the slides or anything? The slides were very hard to copy right? because of the peculiar characteristics of the infrared film. Right. They were a little dark, some were a little light. You know, you couldn't use a regular light meter on this film. Yeah. Yes. And so, so you took these pictures, and you had, and that, so that is that, that's your only experience with something uh, that you captured in the sky, correct? Right. But uh, so you've never actually seen a UFO. You've never had experiences of, you know, maybe in your sleep of things coming into your room or anything like that. I used to have terrible nightmares as a kid, but I was sexually abused. Of course. I mean, that's 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 obvious. You know. Uh, yeah. That would that would uh, of course account for anything like that. Well, what about so your 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 practice? What got you into Wicca? What was it that that got you into Wiccan? I'm sorry, got you into practicing. Wicca, Wicca is the practice. So Wicca is cursed practices. Um, my first wife, uh, I 
met her in Seattle at uh, some event, and uh, she was uh, practicing uh, a feminist version of work at the time. And uh, she told me, in Wicca, all acts of love and pleasure are rituals to the gods. And I thought that was an extraordinarily broad-minded view that could take in even my experience with Dalek. Right. And uh, for the most part, um, so uh, she got me involved when she was my primary teacher. Uh, and uh, she, you know, she was also the mother of my daughter, I should add. I have a daughter who, uh, she says she doesn't want to know anything about my sex life, but she designs the covers of my books. And I should also mention, while I've got you on here, and let's see where I am. So I have two other books. Uh, one is uh, only available from Smashwords as uh, a, an e-book. Okay. That is um, Growing Up in the Orbelin Box, Secrets of a Right to Child. And so is that also another personal experience that you've had? Yes. That's all about the doctor that molested me and the strange sexual psychodynamics that my family adopted because of their belief in will help right. Right, right, right. So um, if you if you can, you can send me the link. Uh, if you can email me the link to, to that uh, ebook as well, and I can put that in the show notes for, for this episode sure, as well as that book. The other book I have is, well, I think my most recent, recent it was published in 2016. It's a short, uh, racy uh, science fiction novel uh, called Melchior, an Interstellar Affair. And it's about a woman who is sort of living three parallel timelines in the story. One uh, involving uh, a crashed extraterrestrial who becomes her lover. The second involving her first husband, she is a total jerk. And the third involving her second husband, who is an investigative reporter, finds out about the UFO experience accidentally, has to deal with the psychological damage that the first husband did. Right. What was your inspiration for your novel that you wrote, this last novel that you wrote? My inspiration was a number of things uh, that I found out stories I researched while I was out west, while I lived in New Mexico and reported largely on the, uh, that was 1992 uh, to 99, I think. Interesting. Cool. Eight years after. And uh, I, I just came across uh, a bunch of stories that all seemed to have a common thread to them. And I, you know, created some characters and what Interesting. Interesting. Now, after this experience that you had with Dolly, where didn't you 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 never had another experience with a dolphin? Uh, but I mean, like, you're you're still consider yourself a, a zoophile, correct? Yeah. So well, how do you how do you say or how do you think that these things should be perceived in in today's society? Like, how do you what do you how do you feel about that kind of thing? I think we should base laws on the question of what is harm done. No harm is done in a sexual relationship between a man and a beast or a woman and a beast. Why is it against the woman? Well, I think that it's the lack of consent is what most people use. There is no lack of consent. That's a fiction. But I mean, how, look, how do look, you... Wait a minute, wait a minute. You look at documentary videos, and I can send you a bunch of money to other species get consent. Okay. It may be long, it may be short. You know, even insects have these elaborate little dances they do to get consent. You're Who right. You know? But you know, so there's... It, those things are, are still not human, and those things still do not operate in the court of law under our society. So you have to define those things by our standards. And so to make it universal, to make it something that all humans can abide by. 
So how do you define consent from so many different species? No, your partner. Right, but I mean, that's a personal one-on-one. I mean, that's it's a, it's just such a very difficult thing to tackle because, you know, then you it, not you can't just tackle the idea of consent. You have to I, tackle the idea of intelligence and what can or cannot give consent. Because I mean, I, I mean, anybody can agree that you can put peanut butter on your balls and have a dog lick it off, but it's not a sexual experience for the dog. The dog just wants peanut butter. The dog likes peanut butter. Exactly. So, right. So is it exactly. consent? Because put, for you it's you know, sexual, but for the dog head, it's not. not. Obviously, it was a little fun. Right. I'm, you know, you're not somebody who is giving something good to the dog. Right, right. So a zoophile would obviously be somebody who's in love with the with the animal itself. Caring. Caring, of course. Caring, yeah. You know? Um, I don't love, I didn't love a dog uh, the way I did either of my ex-wives. Uh, it would be silly to compare them. But... Dog is a different, really a different kind of love. It's uh, it's almost selfless. Yeah. And eventually, both of my marriages failed to work out, and I have no desire to uh, do it a third kind. If if you could, if you could, or if you had the opportunity, would you rekindle a relationship with another dolphin? Not a captive one. Right. I did go diving uh, with some dolphins in the Bahamas in 2005. A friend of mine made a movie about it, which is on YouTube. Uh, and uh, we were being towed behind the ship, but they got breaks. The, the dolphin pod would stop, and uh, we, would, we would stop. This dolphin just, it was a spotted dolphin, so it wasn't even a bottle nose, like, uh, that right. was plant. Right, right, right. But this ran up to me, and it looked me right in the eye. Just for a second. And for me, that gave us held some kind of absolution. So, Jack, we understand. We're here. That's my way. Right, right. Have you? Do you spend? I mean, you live. Uh, you live in Florida, and do you? Yeah. Do you spend? Do you spend time at the beach? You know, hanging around in the water and whatnot. Do you? Do you at least go and spot dolphins or anything of the sort? Well, a couple of factors are at work there. I'm an hour from the ocean beach. Okay. Lots of dolphins have been spotted in the Peach River here, but not very often. Uh, I think they uh, come in more around the winter time. Solid. But uh, also the beach around here, as you'll notice from the news lately, has been polluted with red tide and uh, green plastic algae uh, that's shooting out of Lake Okeechobee. Right. So the Corps of uh, Army Corps of Engineers is doing a coefficient job. So no, I don't go to the beach no. much. Uh, what I try to do is keep in touch with other people, particularly people who have had telepathic experiences like me. I'd like to mention uh, a couple named David and Tracy uh, Allroyd over in England, who apparently have some kind of a, 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 a ban on their board. They've, they've written and published a trilogy based on David's experiences as a dolphin trainer in the early 70s in England, which was really bad. Right. But he, he is one of these people who just sort of figured out that he could train dolphins telepathically, and he did. And um, so there's a saying... guy named, um, okay, uh, New Zealand. Right. Now yeah, you're I saying got... that uh, that guy's book was banned? The English guy's book. Yes. Well, he can't get it publicized. You know, he gets invited to speak at, at, at lectures, and then he gets canceled just before the lecture. 
right. he couldn't find a publisher for it. You know? Right. Uh, so he published it himself off the Alliance. I mean that's yeah that's the world it, that we live in now. If, if uh, it's you know it's not really time. I'm, either... not, I'm not suggesting, by the way, that he had anything remotely approaching my relationship with the golf. No, yeah, I understand. He, he was just one of the female golf and Scott Horton came on to him, but he's not a zoophile, so he wasn't turned on by it. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you keep in touch with these other people who've had similar telepathic experiences. I I think at the end of all this there is a um. I think that's probably one of the most interesting and and fascinating aspects of the whole thing is the telepathic abilities of yes. of dolphins. Uh, I've heard that there's and and I heard I can't remember the name of the fellow, but he was a um, he was a chemist during the '60s and the '70s and uh, did a lot of personal experiences with uh, PCP. And he claimed that dolphins can actually encode in information into physical objects and then can uh, come, like, using telepathy, can encode information into, like, maybe a sand dollar or a rock or something that's that's physically in the ocean and can come back and, and draw the information as well as other, other dolphins can come and pull that information. He said he discovered that being on PCP. Yeah, well... Um, all he has to do is document it, and he'll be up for a Nobel Prize. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't understand. I, there, there, that's the thing. When you be, as soon as a scientist starts personally experimenting, uh, kind of like John C. Lilly with with the drug, and they're not doing the experiment on uh, other test subjects, there's a lot of credibility flies out the window when that happens. John C. Lilly um, insisted on testing the drugs on himself first, so he would know. Uh, human subjects or whatever would not be uh, right. damaged. Right. Which, which I, I, I understand uh, where he's coming from as far as just not uh, wanting to understand the effects, but it's still, you know, he's still intravenously injecting more ketamine than just about anybody, than an elephant should fucking take. <laughs> the guy, yeah. And of uh, course... And his, his wife saved him one time. She found him face down in the tank. Yeah, and and it was his friend. His friend actually called her, and said, yeah. "I gotta talk to I gotta talk to John right now." Yeah. And it was because it, there was a again like a, he was starting to dabble in this other sort of realm of of tele tele telepathy and whatnot. So very I think very very interesting stuff. Let me ask you: Is there any animal if you could if you could make love to any animal? Which animal would it be? Well, I don't consider dolphins to be animals. Uh, they are people. They are the non human people with the sea to me now. So uh, that's what I would make love again. Like You'd make love to a dolphin. So how, let me dolphin, so let me rephrase. Let me explain. Okay. Dolphin had the awareness. We were both crossing a threshold. No other animal has that awareness except human beings, as far as I know. You don't think Just, there's there's any other kind of primate or maybe um, a different you know that maybe animal. maybe else I don't know you know they're not right. uh, they're not magical. Frankly, I'm afraid of chimpanzees. They're very nasty. What about bonobos? Would you ever make love with a bonobo? <laughs> no comment. As far as, did you say no comment? Ask, ask Dr. Susie about that. Act who? Dr. Susie. Uh, who's who's uh, Dr. Susie? She's got a podcast out of L.A. where uh, she uh, calls it Bonoboville, where her model for how uh, humans should live and love is uh, Bonobo, you know, tribal society, where instead of beating the other ape to death with a uh, bone, you uh, take love with them. Yeah. Yeah, that is the very. It's a very, very fascinating difference that arose simply from being separated by the Congo River. You know, you have the the two different species on each side of the Congo River. Very much different. The the cultures themselves are very, very much different between those two animals. Yeah. 
But yeah, one now, of them. The interesting thing is, and this, I wish, I wish we could study the subject of Gotham telepathy because if you read the accounts of the abductees, uh, David and Johnson, um, Doug Hopkins, other other writers on the subject, inevitably the people who are abducted and taken aboard the saucer, aliens communicate with them by what? Correct. Inevitably. In that and. We, we don't know how to stop them. We don't acknowledge this phenomena in our science. But it is very real. And, uh, you know, if we can, if we, dolphins are a little bit more accessible than, than the occupants of the UFO, I think. That doesn't mean, you know, that we uh, ought to be, you know, enslaving them and hanging them. I believe there's a woman researcher in, down in the Bahamas been diving with them and recording uh, video for 30 years of audio and trying to, you know, analyze. But you've got to expect that dolphin communication by this time is going to be very, very compressed. They can say, you know, what they have to say in a burst of sound is two or three seconds long. Maybe they can even project holograms to each other that way. We don't know for sure. I know, yeah, for all we know, the, the sound, the audible sound that they make is not even any kind of real communication, and all their actual communication is done telepathically. Uh, but, I mean, that was, in essence, what John C. Lilly was trying to do. He was trying to translate the dolphins for the very purpose of being able to... Com he said, if we can translate what the dolphins are saying, when the aliens do show up, we'll be able to communicate with them. So that was his theory. That was his theory, yes. That was what his theory and he was trying to prove. But that, and he's almost was, there because was, it's just it's telepathy. Gave him, that was why NASA gave him I don't know, seventy five thousand dollars to swallow money back then. Yeah, to put a to put yeah. a lady in a house with a dolphin and she ended up jacking it off. Well, uh <laughs> she had the most innocent of motives. It was just so he would focus on the work. Exactly, but and I mean that was a very, very large oversight. When it comes to doing an experiment with dolphins, it just showed how little they actually knew about dolphins and how sexually uh, uh, charged creatures they are. Like the things, the things are ejaculating and and making love and coming like constantly, like four or five times a day. To think that you would be able to put it in a house with not another dolphin or or no way for it to relieve itself is, uh, like I said, it's a very large oversight in that experiment. Yeah. I can't attest to your figures. I don't know where you got them from. It might be, you know, it might be a good day for a dolphin or a bad day for a dolphin. You know, there's some. The, 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 mayor, the males pair up. The mayor's, males pair for life, uh, pretty much, with another companion. Uh, they each have a separate uh, name. And uh, the females, uh, when they're in heat, you know, they find a couple of males who are agreeable. And then they go off and they hang out with other pregnant moths. And when they have their uh, young, they manage to stay awake for a month afterwards to care for the baby. No other animal can do that. It would be dead. A dolphin can do that. And wait, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? What do they do for a month? They stay awake. The mother dolphin stays awake for a month after the birth of her baby. And do you do you have any idea of why they might do that? Because the ones who fell asleep, their babies got eaten. Okay. So they That's just a, stay away for. They 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 they're constantly giving care. Okay. Right. And after a month, they find somebody else, another another mom, or you know, a, a, a mom with an older kid, or even sometimes their brother. They'll recruit him to take care of the kid. So they can go off and get a little piece of pie or fish or whatever. But, you know, we don't know anything about them. We don't. They're very hard. Now, what I'm interested in now, we'll sort of wrap things up, I guess, is actually, uh, can I use remote viewing as a legitimate way to investigate the dolphins in the world? You're familiar with remote viewing. Of course, yeah. Are you asking, can you? Is that something that you've experimented yourself with doing or you're, you're trying to do? I haven't yet. I 
really think I'm about as slight as the average brick. Which, but, when it comes to when it comes to remote viewing, shouldn't have anything stopping you. I mean, the remote viewing is supp supposed to be something that anybody can do, even if you're not, quote unquote, uh, have any psychic abilities. I know it's a protocol. Protocol was developed by Ingo Swan, but um, I don't. I, I've never been trained in it, and I think I have to take. If I'm going to undertake something like this. I have to take some professional training in it before I get involved. Oh, I mean, if you Google, you can look it up. There, the CIA has has an, has step by step instructions that are published on the internet for teaching anybody. It's the this like this the specific CIA protocol for doing remote viewing that uh and it states right in there that that uh you don't necessarily need any kind of now i know ingo swan was a special case and he's going to tell you that that you're it's going to help you, nobody's going to be on a level of ingo swan he was a he was a different person altogether uh but well you had the help of the play or whatever right um i would I, people i'm going to Right now, the only book I have in print is uh, a goddess, and that's from Amazon. And the uh, e-book is also available from Smashwords. Actually, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put both links uh, to that uh, in the show notes. Smashwords. And um, uh, Melchior is available as an audio book uh, from Audible or iTunes or you know, wherever fine audible books are so. Excellent. So, yeah, I mean, with this was I want to thank you for for joining us and for doing this. Uh, this episode should come out uh, this this following Monday. And uh, thanks, man. This was this was a very again, it's just an intrigue thing. Like this is not something that a lot of people even know about. Uh, and, and, and where we weren't here to, uh, you know, again, to belittle in any way the thing that we just it's just interesting. It's very it's something that's very, very interesting. <laughs> I, I have never, for the record, I have never advocated that anybody else practice suophilia or adopt it as a way of life. Of course not. You are I mean, in it's, a it's, lot of stress, believe me. Uh, yeah, I Your mean, lover is chap. It can be bought, it can be sold, it can be taken away from you at the behest of the state. You have no rights whatsoever. So, just put that in your pipe and smoke. There you go. So thank you very much, Malcolm J. Brenner. And again, you thank can... you, man. It's been very good being on your show. You are more intelligent than ninety percent of the other people I've spoken with. <laughs> I don't wouldn't go that far, man. We only talked for an hour. Uh, so yeah, but thank you very much for being on the show. And again, we just we, it's it's interesting, man. And I and and thank you very much. And uh, uh, people, I think I think people are going to find this very interesting and are really really going to like it. And I, I just, I really can't thank you enough. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Good night. This episode of Road Soda is brought to you by Subsonic. Subsonic. Come out and see us behind the Sonic. And that's any Sonic in America. You can go into a Sonic and get what? A burger? Hot dog? Some kind of slushy thing? You don't want that shit. Pick up a Rise and Shine on your way to work. That's three cigarettes, a bologna sandwich, and a pint of schnapps. Well, how about a spanky meal? It's a Schlitz Tallboy, bologna sandwich, and a penthouse. We got 3,500 locations nationwide. No drive through no waiting. Just pull up, buy your sack. It's cash only, and you better move quick or the deal goes bad. You know where we are. Look for the van by the dumpster. At the end already. already. It was uh, this was a longer episode, I know. It, I haven't put it together yet. It didn't but feel as long as it as it probably no. is. But I because wasn't there's there also for a lot of it. Yeah. There's also an hour long interview in there that you are not a part of. Yeah, that right. we just ended. So this is right after that interview, guys. If you are thinking whatever you're thinking about that interview, why don't you call in right now? 
at 706-200-1213 and tell me or tell us what you think about the interview, how you felt, any thoughts, feel anything. Just tell yeah. us. That would be great. Or you can write it in to us at uh, roadsodamail at gmail.com. We'd be so appreciative. Would be, yeah. I'd be really yeah. appreciative. I love hearing from you guys. I love. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Grant call in one day. Mm -hmm. uh, you, yeah, you I remember, remember Grant. Grant? Yeah. He called and he said... Uh, you guy, he's like, hey, this is Grant, and I want to let you know that my blood type is still the same because I've <laughs> never had a blood transfusion. <laughs> Fantastic. That's hilarious. And I was like, as soon as I heard that, I was like, yeah. Patrick would love this. That's good. This is fucking great. And I, that's the kind of, you don't have to be as clever as Grant. Grant is a specialist yeah. because he listens to like every episode and he's fucking, he's like a part of the show. That but that's what happens. Bar. You become part of the show, mm -hmm. and, and that's what we want. And uh, Yeah, and then we could, you could call in too, possibly. I mean. If you're as smart as Grant. If you're smart, but, I, mean, but I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's a tough thing. Yeah. So, uh, but, but, um, Mr. Mr. P Man. Yeah. What did you learn? What did I learn? Um, I learned that I, I, I channeling other psychics is, um, it's actually slightly harder than I thought it was. Um, yeah. Um, but still well within my wheelhouse. Yeah, you are the best psychic. I learned that Grant's fucking hilarious because I, I'm sorry if I didn't give you a good laugh from that, but I just I don't laugh when I think something's really funny. It's actually all internal, but that was funny. I, I love that did. line. That is a great line. Um, yeah. uh, I found out um, that uh, I'm not sick of Seth Rogen, though I should be. Yeah. I know I should be. I could definitely do the math and, and convince you that I should be sick of him, but I'm I'm not. Yeah. I, and I don't understand why. I think, um, but yet, but yet the show wasn't. No, the show stunk. stunk. Like, but, but I mean, Seth it's, it's, was still cool. Yeah, he's cool. And Would the, you hang out with Seth? No, no, not at all. <laughs> no, because because he's a he's a weed pusher, and I smoke weed every day. But I don't. I hate people pushing no, weed. weed I do. It's medical for yeah. me. Like I, I don't like weed pushers at all. Don't I don't like, like pushers, pushers of anything. Yeah. I don't like people who control words, like saying "don't say this word around me." I don't like yeah. people who say "smoke this around me." And, but you're, you're not I, tired of him. Um, no. no. <laughs> I like him. I like his I vibe. Him. <laughs> I like him though. I, I hate him, but I like him. Yeah. Um, I never, let's see, what did I learn? I learned that uh, text messages that are sent are probably ghosts that you can go back and solve mysteries for. Really? <laughs> Every text message? Cause my no, the, I, was, I was pulling on the news story <laughs> that we had about the, the sp phony texts that went out. What was yeah. the first news story I had? Oh, my God, dude, my memory is just... The first news story was the giant head through a, through a window. Yeah, I, yeah. Learned, I learned that if uh, you have a raging bull of a woman trying to yell at you, she is easily diverted by a yeah, camera that, recording you. That's actually really... That's, that's very insightful that you said. So take whatever the... Um, the incited, you know, angry du jour thing is just point at it. Be like, but that guy's gay. I think that doesn't yeah. work anymore. But like in the in the er, in the late in the nineties, <laughs> if someone was mad at you for cutting him off, you'd be like, but that guy's gay, and then she would just run like an attack yeah, dog yeah. on him. Now we'd have to be like, well, that guy's got a MAGA hat or something, no, and then and then that's you could it. go. You're right. Yeah. So she was more. It just the next thing that would be a little more pissy than her getting cut off with somebody recording. That, that's her. That's really insightful because yeah, because it didn't matter who she was yelling at. Yeah. She just needed to yell at somebody. She just You're did. right. That that was a perfect illustration of that. That was, and it was a very crazy. Uh, yeah. Because my, my kids are in there listening to Kid kids Bob. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> they, that's why she's specifics. fucking pissed. She's just yeah. like the thirteenth playthrough of, kid, of kid, Kids kid, Bob. Kids like, yeah. Guys, uh, if you like the show, I didn't you like it when Drake sang it. I don't like, like it when these kids. Are <laughs> <laughs> I don't like when these kids are singing it. All right, guys, that's the end. We've had a fun episode. It just, they go by so quick, man. Thank you so much, and hopefully we have you back on the show sooner than later. And maybe one day, if we play our cards right, we'll get them on here. I'm <laughs> <laughs>